Reincarnation of the Strongest Sword God Chapter 201 to Chapter 220 Have fun reading as well as listening. Hey guys! Can I trouble all of you for a moment? Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you won't miss new audiobook updates. That's all. Thank you. Chapter 201, Scripture's Might Hearing Ling Fi Long attempt to fawn over him and his respectful attitude while doing so, Shi Feng couldn't help but sigh. The shoe was on the other foot now. Fate truly knew how to toy with people. Judging from Ling Fi Long's tone, Shi Feng could discern that Ling Fi Long intended to ride on his coattails. If you wish to recruit me, tell me what sort of benefits you plan to offer first, Shi Feng calmly asked. Brother expert, I guarantee that you'll be satisfied. As long as you join Shadow, you'll immediately become an elder of the guild. Moreover, our guild has a large backing behind us, and we have plenty of funding, so we can temporarily set your annual salary at 1 million credits. In addition, we'll give you 10% of Shadow's shares. I think you should know the value of guild shares, right? As long as Shadow rises to glory in the future, this 10% will far exceed tens of millions of credits. No other guild can offer you this kind of treatment, Ling Fi Long explained, very satisfied with himself. His words even moved his own heart. That was 10% of the guild's shares. Right now, all of the guilds out there only offered high annual salaries when recruiting an expert, none of them would willingly hand over a portion of the guild's shares. Along with the guild's growth, the value of its shares would continuously rise. In addition to God's domain's growth potential, if Shadow properly developed as time went on, this 10% could represent billions of credits or more. Hence, all the large guilds would not simply offer their shares, and instead, choose the wise decision of offering a static salary. Who's making this promise? Shi Feng was slightly bewildered. He did not think that Shadow would be so decisive in their actions. In Shi Feng's previous life, although he was the guild leader of Shadow, he did not possess any shares of the guild. However, Shi Feng had only recently become the guild leader at that time, so he did put too much thought into the matter. In the end, the guild kicked him out. One could say that the shares of a guild were the true proof of one's authority. If Shi Feng had 10% of the guild's shares at that time, Lin Heilong would not have dared to casually expel him from the guild and sever all connections with him. Our guild leader made this promise. Of course, with your strength, the position of guild leader will doubtlessly be yours in the future, Ling Fi Long unwaveringly started flattering Shi Feng. Oh! Very well, Shi Feng calmly laughed. He then, with a tone as cold as ice, arrogantly said, Return and tell your guild leader this, if you want me to join Shadow, then I want 60% of the guild's shares in the position of guild leader. Otherwise, there's no deal. Finished speaking, Shi Feng disconnected the call. Of course, he only said those words as a joke to toy with Ling Fi Long. Even if Shadow were willing to hand over 100% of its shares, Shi Feng would still reject the offer without hesitation. He swore that would never again wear the hateful name of Shadow. He simply said those words because he knew that Ling Fi Long, John Luao Yi, and Lan Hei Long could never truly agree to such a request. After all, with 60% of the guild's shares, Shi Feng would become the head honcho of Shadow, his word would be final. Whether it was John Luao Yi or Lan Hei Long, neither could endure being a subordinate of someone else. Such a domineering tone. No wonder he could force Marshall Union, who is even stronger than Shadow, to take a huge loss. Unfortunately, he isn't a broad-minded person. If he had accepted the offer, based on the strength he possessed, he could have easily become the Shadow's true boss in the future if he wanted to. Although Ling Fi Long admired Shi Feng, he sneered disdainfully as he determined Shi Feng to be a boorish fellow. Yet, without a backer to rely on, it was impossible for Ling Fi Long to climb further up the ranks of Shadow. Zhang Luao Yi trusted Zhou Yahu much more than Ling Fi Long. Ling Fi Long was simply an elite member of the guild in Zhang Luao Yi's eyes. So, it was imperative that Ling Fi Long looked for a reliable backer. Meanwhile, a boor like Shi Feng couldn't be a better backer. Although 60% of the total shares seemed a little high, if Ling Fi Long expended a lot of effort, it was not an impossible number to accomplish. It seems that I'll have to rearrange his words before reporting back to Brother Zhang and Brother Lan. At this moment, Shi Feng would have never imagined that his casual remark meant to anger Lin Hei Long and Zhang Luao Yi would become Ling Fi Long's new goal. Inside the Flame God's Cave, Shi Feng took out one of the Flaming Sun scriptures from his bag. He then opened the book, reading the incantations inside. All of a sudden, the Flaming Sun scripture ignited, emitting dazzling golden flames. As if the fire-type mana within the Flame God's Cave had transformed into soldiers, it all charged towards the golden flame, submitting to it. The golden flame was like an emperor among flames. In reality, it wasn't just the fire-type mana that was affected. Even Shi Feng's ice blue devil flame felt restless, giving off the notion of submission. Just what kind of flame is it? Shi Feng looked at the bundle of golden flame, his heart filled with curiosity. To cause even the tier 2 ice blue devil flame to submit, if this flame had a rank, I wonder what tier it belonged to. It should be at least tier 3, possibly tier 4. If Shi Feng could absorb this bundle of golden flame, his strength might rise to a whole new level. Unfortunately, this flame was not a mysterious flame, so Shi Feng had no way of absorbing it. 
After a minute passed, the golden flame sank into Shifeng's body after it absorbed a sufficient amount of fire-type mana. Instantly, a new status effect appeared on Shifeng's status bar. Flaming Sun's Blessing Increases fire resistance by 100 points and reduces damage from fire-type attacks by 90%. All fire-type damage received has a 20% chance to recover an equivalent amount of HP. Damage dealt towards fire-type monsters increased by 100%. Duration of 2 hours Effective only within the Flame God's Cave In reality, the Flaming Sun scripture's original purpose was simply for the convenience of players when grinding in a hot environment. However, when used inside the Flame God's Cave, where the density of fire-type mana was extremely high, its effects increased by many-fold. Hence why the ranger in Shifeng's previous life was able to solo the elite monsters and chieftain ranked bosses here. To begin with, Shifeng already had 20 points of fire resistance. Now that he gained an additional 100 points, normal fire attacks would only be an itch to him. Not to mention, there was also the 90% damage reduction to fire type attacks. This increase was just too awesome. With the Flaming Sun's blessing, Shifeng boldly advanced deeper into the Flame God's Cave. There were multiple pathways in the Flame God's Cave, and it was extremely spacious. Players could easily get lost in the cave. This, however, was not a problem for Shifeng. The Flame God's Cave was like his own backyard, and very quickly, he located a lone level 25 Lava Hound lying on solidified, blackened lava. Lava Hound, Common Monster Level 25 HP 5,400-5,400 5, The Lava Hound was several sizes larger compared to a normal lion. Its entire body emitted red flames, its skin was a dark yellow, and it had a pair of large, crimson eyes. Detecting Shifeng's presence, the Lava Hound abruptly stood, its blood red eyes glared at Shifeng as it let out a low, angry growl. The Lava Hound's sharp claws easily shattered a chunk of charred rock. Just as Shifeng unsheathed the Abyssal Blade in Silver Lake, the Lava Hound spat a mouthful of flames at Shifeng. Without holding anything back, Shifeng activated the Ice Blue Devil Flame, covering his entire body with a deep blue flame. He then charged at the ball of flames head on. The Lava Hound's attack could originally devour close to half of the HP of an MT of the same level. However, when struck Shifeng, the attack merely caused around minus 10 points of damage. The damage the Lava Hound's attack dealt was even less than the attacks of a level 10 common monster. As expected, with 120 points of fire resistance, my resistance has reached extraordinary levels. Finished experimenting with his durability, Shifeng arrived in front of the Lava Hound and sent a chop slashing at its nape, drawing a pool of piping hot blood. A damage of minus 345 points appeared above the Lava Hound's head. The damage was barely within Shifeng's acceptable range. Moreover, due to the Lava Hound being 11 levels higher than himself, Shifeng's skill proficiency also soared with lightning speed. Every usage netted him 3 proficiency points. Although the Lava Hound was powerful, Shifeng only needed to take note of its AoE skills like the Flame Breath and Flame Explosion. Without the threat of these powerful skills, Shifeng only needed to deal with the Lava Hound's sharp claws. With Shifeng's extraordinary evasive techniques, in addition to his very high agility, he could easily dodge the attacks from the Lava Hound's sharp claws. Before even a minute had passed, Shi Feng had killed the level 25 Lava Hound, the monster leaving behind a flame crystal and several copper coins after it died. System, level 25 Lava Hound killed. Level difference of 11. EXP obtained increased by 1100%. Obtained 16,500 EXP. Chapter 202, Scorching Lamia. Within the brightly lit flame god's cave, Shi Feng advanced further into the cave relentlessly. The Lava Hound he previously killed had raised his skill proficiencies by quite a bit. However, that was it. In contrast, the EXP the level 25 Lava Hound gave was much less. However, this was not strange. After all, the monsters within the Flame God's Cave had both high attack power and HP but gave out very little EXP. Under normal circumstances, average players would not grind here at all. However, it was a different story once players had the Flaming Sun scripture. With it, they could easily deal with the monsters in the Flame God's Cave. Moreover, the monsters here dropped flame crystals. Flame crystals were the main materials used for crafting basic fire resistance potions. By the time the majority of players reached levels between 20 to 30, they would discover that most party and team dungeons required a high fire resistance. Otherwise, they would have no way of raiding these dungeons. The level 25 large-scale team dungeon, the Flame Nest, for example, without basic fire resistance potions, players would have absolutely no way of conquering it. Yet, this team dungeon had loads of good equipment and items in it. Moreover, out of all the level 25 dungeons, the Flame Nest gave out the most guild reputation. Most importantly, there was a very small chance for players to obtain a Guild Mine Certificate and Guild Medicine Garden Certificate from the dungeon. These were both items that could allow a guild to develop itself further. Normally, only guilds with their own guild residents would be considered true guilds. Meanwhile, players could establish certain constructs within the guild residents to further aid in the guild's development. Among these facilities, two of the most important constructs were the Medicine Garden and Mine. 
These two constructs could provide the guild with a fixed amount of herbs and ore on a daily basis, and it could greatly reduce the guild's burden. It could also allow potion makers and forgers to have sufficient resources to increase their lifestyle skill proficiencies. Hence, as long as it was a guild that possessed their own guild residence, they would unhesitatingly raid the flame nest regardless of the price they had to pay to obtain these two certificates. As such, plenty of guilds had tried to raid the flame nest when their players reached between 20 and 30 levels, causing the basic fire resistance potion to become a high demand product. Even until now, Shi Feng had remembered that the basic fire resistance potions at that time had sold for 50 silver coins per bottle. Meanwhile, a single flame crystal sold for 15 silver coins. Thus, even at the cost of 3 to 4 gold coins, players would willingly purchase the Flaming Sun scripture. After all, they could easily obtain 25 to 30 flame crystals by grinding the Flame God's Cave for 2 hours. In the Flame God's Cave, a common ranked Lava Hound had a 3% chance of dropping a flame crystal, 3 times higher than the drop rate of fire-type monsters outside. Meanwhile, the level 25 elite monsters in the Flame God's Cave had a 100% chance to drop 1 flame crystal and a 10% chance to drop 2 flame crystals. Of course, these monsters would also drop equipment. As for level 25 special elites, they had a 100% chance of dropping 2 flame crystals, a 20% chance to drop 4 flame crystals, and a 10% chance to drop 5 to 7 flame crystals. Level 25 chieftain bosses were even more rewarding. They had a 100% chance to drop 10 flame crystals, a 30% chance to drop 13 pieces of flame crystals, and 20% chance to drop 20 to 25 flame crystals. Players could easily earn up to 2 gold coins by killing a single chieftain boss. Not to mention, these bosses also dropped equipment and tools. Shi Feng continuously killed lone level 25 lava hounds as he advanced further into the depths of the flame god's cave. Even when he met two lava hounds at the same time, he still easily dealt with them. Only, more time was necessary. The flame breath of the lava hounds could be easily dodged. Players only needed to take note of the lava hound's throat. When its throat glowed and gave off the color of fire, it was about to spit out flames. However, the damage of this move was only a small matter to Shi Feng, it dealt about only minus 100 damage in total to Shi Feng. As for the Lava Hound's other skill, Flame Explosion, it could cause extremely high flame damage to all enemies within an 8-yard radius. Without 120 points in fire resistance and 90% damage reduction to fire-type attacks, MTS of the same level would instantly lose 3 fourths of their HP to the single attack. However, the Lava Hound's actions were obvious before it would cast this skill. It would raise its claws high, then slam them on the ground, creating an explosion of flames. However, the skill's effective range was wide, making it extremely hard to avoid. It was practically a sure-hit skill. Fortunately, Shi Feng's fire resistance was extremely high, and he would, at most, receive around minus 100 damage from the Lava Hound's flame explosion. Shi Feng had over 1800 HP, so this damage was not significant. Another hour or so passed by, and Shi Feng finally arrived at the core area of the Flame God's Cave. On his way here, Shi Feng had killed many Lava Hounds, and due to the luck plus 3 provided by the Shadow's Blessing he wore, he obtained a bountiful number of Flame Crystals. He could get one Flame Crystal for every half a dozen or so Lava Hounds he killed. Throughout his journey, Shi Feng had killed over 40 Lava Hounds, and obtained a total of 8 Flame Crystals. His experience had also risen to 37% of level 14, his leveling speed could already be described as flying. His skills, Chop, Thundering Flash, and Thunder Flame Explosion, also rose to level 7, level 5, and level 3 respectively. If including the upgrade provided by the Abyssal Blade, these skills would be level 10, level 8, and level 6 respectively. These improvements had pushed Shi Feng's damage output to a whole new level once more. Unfortunately, the Lava Hound Shi Feng killed did not drop any equipment, the same went for the forging designs that Shi Feng most desired. The core area Shi Feng had reached was a large, empty lava field, molten lava flowed throughout the surroundings. At the highest point of the empty field sat plenty of bright crystals reflecting the glow of the lava into the surroundings, illuminating the spacious and empty field. The cooled accumulation of lava formed the land here. This place was more like a swamp than a durable stone road, and players would find it very hard to transverse across this lava field. A single misstep would instantly lead to players fall into a pit of molten lava. If players did not possess a definite control over their own bodies, they would find themselves at a serious disadvantage when battling here. Meanwhile, on the empty land a short distance away, Shi Feng discovered plenty of level 25 elite flame naga silently guarding. Occasionally, he could also spot a few level 25 special elite flame naga warriors. Compared to the Lava Hound, these monsters possessed much more intelligence. Aside from attacking with flames, they could also deal a substantial amount of physical damage. These monsters also had exceptionally fast reactions, especially the Flame Naga Warriors. These warriors wore armor and wielded a shield in one of their hands. They were practically shield warriors, and players would find them extremely difficult to deal with. Flame Naga, Elite Rank Level 25 HP 20,000-20,000 Flame Naga Warrior, Special Elite Level 25 HP 50,000-50,000 
Soon after, Shi Feng lifted his head and shifted his gaze towards the distant central region of this lava field. Due to the long distance, Shi Feng had to squint and focus his eyes for quite some time. Only after activating his extraordinary vision could he discover a beautiful figure laying atop a stone altar. That was a Lamia. Unlike her Naga brethren, who possessed the heads and faces of a snake, although the lower half of this Lamia body was a snake's tail, her upper body was that of a human's. This Lamia possessed beauty that even women would envy. Her eyes were like red gemstones, giving off a dazzling glow. Her lustrous and seductive black hair was tied into twin ponytails. Exposed to the light of the flames, her delicate white skin shone like supple white jade. The most attractive parts of this Lamia were her elegant temperament and her exotic beauty. The bright silken blouse she wore was especially eye-catching, as it served to accentuate her delicate body and ample breasts further. Just a glance at this Lamia would easily captivate any intruder. It was truly hard to imagine that this delicate and beautiful Lamia was the scorching Lamia Sela, the level 25 High Lord ranked boss of the Flame God's Cave. Sure enough, the benefits of pioneering a new land are plentiful, I have already found a High Lord rank on this first trip. In Shi Feng's previous life, most of the bosses Shi Feng had met were chieftain rank, and only rarely could he meet a Lord ranked boss. Only with superb luck could one find a Lord ranked boss. Shi Feng's eyes shone as he gazed at scorching Lamia Sela's attractive appearance, his breathing became slightly hurried. He also grew excited, a never-before-seen resplendent smile appearing on his calm face. Of course, Shi Feng wasn't captivated by Sela's beauty, but the bountiful wealth that a High Lord ranked boss represented. Not to mention, Sela was the High Lord of the Flame God's Cave. If he could kill her, he wondered just how much EXP and high-level items and equipment he could obtain. If Blackie and the others knew Shi Feng's current thoughts and appearance, they would definitely curse Shi Feng for being inhuman. Not sparing even a weak and delicate Lamia, Shi Feng was practically a beast. Chapter 203, Scorching Heart Molten lava slowly flowed across the vast, empty field. Meanwhile, the scorching Lamia Sela paid no particular attention to the intruder, Shi Feng. She simply swished her tail, slithering to a pool of lava. With a splash, Sela dove straight into the scorching pool, frolicking with a content expression. If a normal player copied Sela's actions and jumped into the lava pool, they could lose their lives in a given minute. Even if they activated the Flaming Sun's Blessing and received an additional 100 points to their fire resistance, they would still lose 300 HP every second they submerged in the lava pool. Taking a good, long look, Shi Feng finally decided upon a plan. Scorching Lamia Sela, High Lord Rank Level 25 HP 500,000-500,000 A Lord Ranked Boss was not as easy to deal with as a Chieftain Ranked Boss. If it were a level 25 Lord Ranked Boss, not to mention a 20-man elite team, even a 100-man elite team would still die at the boss's hands. A Lord Ranked Boss was simply too powerful. The only way to kill these bosses was to gather thousands of players and use the advantage of numbers to exhaust these bosses to death slowly. Other than that, there was no other way around it. Meanwhile, the Scorching Lamia, who bathed in the lava pool, was even more intimidating than a normal Lord Ranked Boss. Without the Flaming Sun scripture, even thousands of players would have zero chances of defeating Sela. On the other hand, Shi Feng had a method of dealing with the Scorching Lamia. However, he first needed to clear out the surrounding elite and special elite monsters. Otherwise, he would be similarly helpless against the Scorching Lamia. Let's first lure them slowly and clear them, bit by bit. Shi Feng then randomly looked for a solitary flame naga, boldly walking over to it. He did not intend to use any special means to lure these monsters. As Shi Feng was only level 14 right now, when faced with level 25 elites, these elites would all charge at him in a craze as long as he came within 40 yards. Hence, he still needed to apply some techniques to lure only one flame naga. Be it a snake-type monster or a naga, both were innately born with exceptional hearing. Hence, players needed to be light on their feet when approaching these naga. If players made even the tiniest disturbance, they would find only their own deaths. Shi Feng walked with a strong and steady pace atop the soft and unstable ground, and with relative ease, he attracted the attention of a flame naga. Immediately, Shi Feng watched as the flame naga charged at him like a madman. Come, come. Seeing that the Naga had taken the bait, Shi Feng faintly smiled as he spun around and ran towards a distant rock cliff. The Flame Naga was well versed in close combat. Meanwhile, its only ranged attack was the Raging Flame Roar, and it belonged to the category of channeling spells. The skill had an effective area of 40 asterisk 4 yards, and it needed 3 seconds to channel the skill fully. However, this skill did not pose any threat to Shi Feng. On the contrary, melee combat with the Flame Naga was much more difficult. As the chase continued, although the flame naga was fast, Shi Feng was not any slower than it either. The moment Shi Feng arrived in front of the rock cliff, with no further paths of retreat remaining, Shi Feng started climbing up the extremely steep cliff with great ease. When he arrived at the top of the cliff, he stuck out his tongue at the creature as he silently looked down at the flame naga. The flame naga was further incensed by Shi Feng's blatant provocation, and it, too, started frantically climbing the cliff. 
Although Shifang was not a ranged class, and he could not kite the Flame Naga, melee battle the Flame Naga was simply too dangerous. If Shifang was slightly careless, the Flame Naga could kill him with just two moves. Hence, Shifang intended to fight from a range. Seeing that the Flame Naga was about to climb the cliff, Shifang took out a basic frost grenade from his bag. He then threw it at the Flame Naga. Pang! Ice fragments scattered, and cold air spread out to the surroundings. The Flame Naga instantly froze. Due to the Flame Naga's fear of the cold, the basic frost grenade managed to deal minus 300 damage to it. However, the Flame Naga possessed 20,000 HP, so this small amount of damage barely made a scratch. Frozen halfway through its climb up the rock cliff, the Flame Naga's immobile body fell. Two stones, protruding from the rock wall, halted the serpentine beast's fall, sandwiching the Flame Naga's body between the rocks as it hung halfway up the cliff. Be it attacking or dodging, the Flame Naga would find it extremely challenging to do either from its current position. It could not even carry out the simple action of turning its own body right now. Shi Feng smiled at this sight. He jumped down from his elevated position, landing on one of the stones trapping his opponent. He then started attacking the Flame Naga from behind. It was extremely easy to kill a Flame Naga that had zero means of retaliating. Shi Feng sent a level 10 chop slashing at the Flame Naga's back, earning him a scream of pain coupled with a damage of minus 168 above the monster's head. Shi Feng couldn't help but admit that a level 25 elite was truly amazing. With the level suppression, in addition to the Flame Naga's superior defense, his attack could not even deal minus 200 damage even with the damage multiplier from the Flaming Sun scripture. Immediately after, Shi Feng followed up with Thundering Flash, Earth Splitter, Double Chop, and Thunder Flame Explosion. A series of damages appeared above the Flame Naga's head. However, even with the damage amplification effect inflicted by Thundering Flash, the highest damage Shi Feng had dealt with a single attack was barely over minus 200 points. Though there was the occasional critical hit of over minus 400 damage, the Flame Naga had a total of 20,000 HP, aside from Shi Feng's skills being capable of causing more than minus 100 damage to the Flame Naga, his normal attacks could not deal over minus 50 damage. Moreover, Shi Feng had activated the Ice Blue Devil Flames effect before his attacks. Seeing as the freezing effect was about to end, Shi Feng threw another basic frost grenade at the Flame Naga, freezing his target once more. He then resumed his barrage of attacks. Although the Flame Naga had relatively fast regeneration, neither was the damage Shi Feng was causing to it a small amount. Two minutes later, the Flame Naga's HP finally fell to 20%. Simultaneously, the Flame Naga released a fierce roar. Flames covered its entire body, and shortly after, its body started trembling. Shi Feng had long since been prepared for it. Immediately, he hid behind the corner of a rock. Boom. Countless flying flame blades shot out from the Flame Naga's body. These flame blades were the beast scales, and their appearance signaled its ultimate move, flame bullets. The damage these flame bullets dealt was a combination of physical and fire-type damage. With Shi Feng's current HP that was slightly over 1,800 points, these bullets could instantly send him into a critical condition. However, with the iron-like rock blocking these blades for him, Shi Feng received no damage at all. After the waves of flame bullets ended, Shi Feng threw out another frost grenade before resuming his attack. In the end, Shi Feng killed the level 25 flame naga with relative ease. The instant the Flame Naga died, Shi Feng's experience bar increased by a small portion. Shi Feng was already level 14, and he needed an extremely large amount of EXP to reach level 15. His experience bar rising by a noticeable chunk showed just how bountiful the EXP the Flame Naga provided was. The Flame Naga also dropped two Flame Crystals, one Bronze Ornament, and tens of Copper Coins. Ornaments were the rarest of all equipment. Compared to jewelry such as rings and necklaces, ornaments were far more valuable. In God's domain, every player could equip three ornaments at most. As of this moment, however, Shi Feng's ornament window was still a big, empty space. He truly did not imagine that he would inadvertently obtain a bronze ornament. His luck was simply too good. Scorching Heart, Ornament, Bronze Rank Equipment Requirement, Strength 80 Strength plus 10, Agility plus 10, Endurance plus 10 Fire Resistance plus 3 Can be activated to cast a Tier 2 Flame Shield that can absorb a maximum of 1000 flame damage. Although this ornament did not offer a large increase to his attributes, ornaments that could increase one's resistances were extremely rare. Every such ornament was valued at 6 gold coins or more. This is too great. I'm now level 14, and I have 114 points in strength and 131 points in agility. If I equip the Scorching Heart, it will increase both my strength and agility by 10 points, just enough for me to meet the requirements of 120 points in strength and 140 points in agility for the Blazing Meteor. Shi Feng was ecstatic as he held the Flame Red Colored Scorching Heart. Shi Feng did not think that he could equip the pseudo-extraordinary weapon within such a short period after obtaining it. If he could equip the Blazing Meteor right now, his strength would definitely receive an explosive increase. He might even reach the standards of an official Tier 1 Swordsman. Chapter 204, Battle Prowess of a Tier 1 If he could increase his strength to the standards of a Tier 1 Swordsman, he could easily deal with the High Lord Rank Scorching Lamia. 
The Scorching Lamia had 500,000 HP, possessing the superior battle recovery of a High Lord ranked boss, the Scorching Lamia could recover 10,000 HP every 5 seconds. If players did not possess a DPS, 1 of 2,000, Sela was, essentially, invincible. This was one of the reasons even an elite team of hundreds of players could not exhaust a High Lord to death. Not to mention, the Scorching Lamia possessed frightening attacks and overly powerful skills. If players wanted to raid Sela head-on, it would be no different than seeking their own deaths even with a team of thousands of players. However, it would be a different story if they possessed the Flaming Sun scripture. Previously, before Shi Feng obtained the Scorching Heart, he had close to no confidence of successfully soloing the Scorching Lamia. He merely thought of giving it a try. In any case, he would not incur a huge loss. However, he now had some confidence in actually killing Sela. Although Shi Feng had never experienced the might of a pseudo-extraordinary weapon, according to Shi Feng's estimates, it should grant him the strength of an official Tier 1 swordsman. Immediately, Shi Feng retrieved the pseudo-extraordinary weapon, the Blazing Meteor, from his bag, equipping it on himself. Blazing Meteor, Throwing Weapon, Dark Gold Rank. Equipment Requirement, Strength 120, Agility 140. Attack Power, Value is set at Player's Strength Asterisk 2. Strength plus 50, Agility plus 65, Endurance plus 10. Attack Speed plus 5. Maximum Throwing Distance, 45 yards. Ignore levels plus 8. Attack speed increased by 15%. When attacking. 35% chance to ignore target's defense. 30% chance to activate quadruple phantom effect, each phantom causing 50% flame damage. 10% chance to activate knockback effect. 5% chance to activate burning flames effect, dealing 200 flame damage to the target every second for 10 seconds. Stacks up to 5 times. Additional skill, Flame God's Fury. Deals physical and flame damage to enemies within a 40 asterisk 3 yard area. Deals 900% damage to the initial target, and damage reduces by 10% with each consecutive enemy hit to a minimum of 500% damage. Cooldown, 3 minutes. The Blazing Meteor was forged by the Grandmaster Forger, Ciliara. Due to the limit of its materials, it is only a pseudo-extraordinary item possessing strength at the very limit of mortal man. The Blazing Meteor can be reforged into an epic-ranked item after gathering epic-ranked fire-type materials. User Restriction, Ye Feng. Unable to be dropped. Unable to be traded. After equipping it, Shi Feng's attributes instantly soared. His strength reached 174 points, while agility reached 206 points. He was only a few attribute points away from being able to equip the fragmented legendary ranked item, the Heavenly Dragon's Breath, which required 200 points in strength and 120 points in intelligence. With the improvements provided by the pseudo-extraordinary weapon, Shi Feng's attack power with throwing weapons increased to 696 points, while his melee attack power with his right and left hand were 444 and 426 respectively. The base damage for his ranged attacks far surpassed his melee attacks. In addition, due to the blazing meteor ignoring plus 8 levels, Shi Feng would no longer face any level suppressions, which would greatly reduce his damage, when dealing with level 25 monsters. As Shi Feng's agility attribute reached 200 points, he once again activated one of the hidden passive skills, Basic Disappearance. The passive skill increased Shi Feng's movement speed and attack speed by 20% and greatly decreased his stamina consumption during a battle. When he tread water, he could travel a distance of 10 yards with a single leap. His evasion also increased by 10%. With such a boost, Shi Feng's confidence increased once more. I can start clearing the place now, Shi Feng shifted his gaze towards the distant elites and special elites. Since his ranged attacks were more impressive than his melee attacks now, he would naturally avoid using his previous, inefficient battle techniques. He could simply copy the ranger in his previous life, using the basic kiting method to kill these naga. That way, not only would the battle be swift, but he could also guarantee his own safety. At a spot 43 yards away, two level 25 elite flame naga and one special elite flame naga warrior currently conversed with each other in soft tones. None of them had noticed Chi Feng's presence. In contrast, Chi Feng, currently covered in deep blue flames, retrieved the flame red, thin, needle-like blazing meteor from his waist. He aimed the blazing meteor at the flame naga warrior standing between the other two flame naga, initiating his attack. Shiyu. The blazing meteor shot through the air, transforming into a meteor and instantly piercing the flame naga warrior's forehead. Simultaneously, the ignore target's defense effect and quadruple phantom effect both triggered upon impact. Before that flame naga warrior could even manage a scream, minus 1526, minus 758, minus 758, minus 758, minus 758 appeared above its head. Even Shi Feng dared not believe his own eyes right now. Although he had the support of the Flaming Sun scripture, the might of this single attack was still too powerful. A single, normal attack had destroyed over 4,500 HP from the Flame Naga Warrior, which was close to one-tenth of the Special Elite Monster's total HP, Shi Feng only needed to repeat this attack 11 more times to kill a level 25 Special Elite. 
In the entire god's domain, aside from Shi Feng, there might not be a second person capable of carrying out such a feat. Replying to Shi Feng's brutal attack, the three Naga released angry roars. They revealed sinister expressions as they charged towards Shi Feng, gradually splitting from the main force of the Naga. When the distance between the three Naga and Shi Feng had shortened 20 yards, Shi Feng threw a basic frost grenade at them. The three Naga immediately froze in place, damages of minus 300 appearing above their heads. Holding nothing back, Shi Feng threw the blazing meteor at the three Naga relentlessly. The blazing meteor's effects constantly triggered, each attack dealing over minus 1000 damage, while the occasional critical hit dealt over minus 2000 damage. The three Naga were helpless. They could only attack Shi Feng using fire type spells. However, Shi Feng always managed to predict the location of their attacks, so he could dodge the attacks beforehand, never letting any of the spells land on him. Before even two minutes had passed, the two elite and one special elite monster died. They contributed a large amount of EXP and multiple flame crystals to Shi Feng. Possibly due to the Shadow's Blessings effect, the special elite Naga even dropped a level 22 mysterious iron ranked plate armor. Afterwards, Shi Feng repeated this process of luring and killing the elite and special elite Naga. Although the process was mind-bogglingly boring, the fatigue on his spirit lessened greatly when Shi Feng thought about the flame crystals and the various level 20 to level 25 equipment he could obtain. Unknowingly, more than four hours had passed. Shi Feng had cleared out practically all of the Naga present in this lava field. Shi Feng had also risen to level 15, and he was only a tad bit away from level 16. While Shi Feng rested, he opened the ranking list for White River City. Right now, the first place on the ranking list was occupied by a level 13 player. Shi Feng could not help his shock at this sight. How could there be someone leveling so quickly? Not much time had passed since players outside of Shi Feng's team had entered White River City. Logically, it would already be amazing for players to reach level 11. Yet, there was actually someone that had reached level 13. Was this person hunting monsters of a higher level as well? Shi Feng's mouth twitched when he saw the name of this first rank player, Lone Tyrant. Who was this person? How come I've never heard this name before? Meanwhile, the Snow Goddess, Gentle Snow, occupied the second place on the ranking list, she was level 12 right now. Following closely, another level 12 player possessed the third rank, and level 12 players occupied the remaining top 10 ranks. This situation confounded Shi Feng. This leveling speed far surpassed his expectations. Could this be due to the butterfly effect? Shi Feng wondered. Although players' leveling speed would indeed increase after entering White River City, it shouldn't increase to such a degree. Meanwhile, the 11th to 50th ranked players on the ranking list were all level 11. Reaching this level was still reasonable. If these players were all level 12 or 13, Shi Feng would truly be speechless. Although the first ranked player had already reached level 13, that player could not even reach Shi Feng's shadow. If other players discovered this fact, they would definitely be shocked. After Shi Feng reached level 15, he had placed all his free attribute points into intelligence. He had done so to meet the requirements of the Heavenly Dragon's Breath as soon as possible. However, the points he added were only a drop in the bucket. It should be about time to deal with you now. After recovering to perfect condition, Shi Feng abruptly stood. He looked at the scorching Lamia still lounging in the pool of lava, a faint smile appearing on his face. TL Notes 1 DPS stands for damage per second. Chapter 205, Queen's Rage Just when Shi Feng contemplated raiding the delicate and weak-looking Scorching Lamia, the entire White River City region flew into an uproar. The cause was no other than the White River City region's ranking list. A level 13 player actually held the first place. What is this? I've only managed to reach level 10 and enter White River City after much difficulty, yet, there is already a level 13 player. What did this bastard eat growing up? I know, right. That lone tyrant fellow previously ranked in the tens, but he had suddenly shot up to first place, surpassing even the snow goddess. Lone tyrant is from a guild called Dark Star. Isn't that a third-rate guild? How could they be so strong as to surpass the snow goddess? The official forums were already in a fiery uproar over this matter, and the previous issue relating to Shi Feng had become forgotten history. Inside the level 10, 10 man team dungeon, the Dark Crow Cave. A black feathered crow with a 6 meter tall body lay motionless on the ground, a pile of items sitting by its side. Among these items, there were pieces of level 10 mysterious iron set equipment. There were even two secret silver ranked items and a large number of rare materials. Meanwhile, standing beside this black feathered crow was a fairy. This fairy possessed skin as white as snow and an appearance that could charm any mortal man. Her body was the very definition of absolute perfection. However, this fairy's eyes possessed a penetrating gaze with a boundless and intimidating chill. This woman who seemed to transcend mortal men was none other than Gentle Snow. System, Auroboros has cleared the hard mode of Black Crow Cave. Rewarding 300 guild reputation. Snow, someone's reached level 13 already. They're a lot faster than we are. Why don't we stop dungeon diving and resume leveling up, possessing a similarly devilish body, Zhao Yura pouted as she spoke, displeased. 
After going to a level 12 monster area while they were only level 9, they quickly discovered that they could constantly improve their battle prowess. Although it was extremely difficult to kill those monsters, in the beginning, they rose swiftly after experiencing many near-death situations and long periods of research and self-reflection. With their battle techniques having greatly improved, they felt that killing monsters three levels higher was no longer just a pipe dream. They also felt that they could achieve the feats Xi Feng had displayed in the past, similarly obtaining an effortless victory over a great number of players. After arriving at White River City, they immediately picked up the daily reputation quests. They then looked for an extremely good leveling spot, grinding there for a period. However, due to their equipment being slightly outdated, they decided to raid a dungeon to upgrade their equipment, making preparations to obtain the first clear of one of the level 10 large-scale team dungeons. Otherwise, a player from a measly third-rate guild wouldn't have surpassed them. Ignore him. Compared to levels, the first clear of a large-scale team dungeon is far more important. Moreover, after exceeding level 15, it won't matter, even if we manage to clear the hell mode of a level 10 large-scale team dungeon. Our equipment should be close to ready now, so let's start with obtaining the first clear of a level 10 party dungeon. When Gentle Snow noticed Lone Tyrant's name occupying the first position on the ranking list, a calm smile appeared on her pure and untainted complexion. Gentle Snow's team members revealed excited smiles when faced with Gentle Snow's decision. They could finally display their prowess for all to see. After all, they had all been experts in the past virtual reality games. Throughout this period, they had constantly strived and battled against high-level monsters. During their breaks, they would research the videos of experts, especially Shi Feng's battle footage. Although the video was short, it held great significance. The more they studied Shi Feng's battle, the more shocked they became. Unknowingly, their own battle techniques also began to improve madly. To put it another way, they had started to familiarize themselves with the realistic battle methods of God's domain. Simultaneously, they had also grasped the hold of their body's true strength. The hard mode of a team dungeon could not fully sate their thirst for growth. It was especially true after they familiarized themselves with their extraordinary condition. Right now, only hell mode could truly excite them. Just like when they were in the hell mode of Dark Moon Graveyard, they wished to experience the feeling of having every single cell within their bodies tremble. In the past, they believed that their trembling represented fear. In reality, however, that trembling resulted from the excitement that grew in their hearts. Meanwhile, the other large guilds were similarly shocked by the sudden appearance of Lone Tyrant but quickly dismissed this matter from their minds. The average players, however, were astonished. This incident had allowed the Apex third-rate guild, Dark Star, to firmly establish a foothold in White River City. Even the second-rate guild, the Assassin's Alliance, was a step behind them. None of the top ten players on the ranking list belonged to the Assassin's Alliance. Contrary to expectations, the Assassin's Alliance had three members ranked within the top 30. One of them was the guild leader, ranking 18th. The second person was Stabbing Heart, who ranked 26th. Finally, the Assassin's Alliance's top elementalist ranked at 29th. Yet, to the majority of the players within the White River City region, having such a rank was no different than having no rank at all. The fame of having such a rank was worlds apart from that of being in first place. Flame God's Cave At this moment, Shi Feng had lured the level 25 High Lord rank Scorching Lamia to a corner absent of any lava. Half of the Sela's amazing prowess relied on the presence of lava. Hence, by luring her away from the lava, the raid difficulty of the Scorching Lamia instantly reduced by half. However, even with such a reduction, Sela was still a High Lord ranked boss. She was not something average players could afford to provoke. Kneel before me and receive your punishment of flames, the Scorching Lamia's finger trembled, and suddenly, a whip of flames appeared from her finger. She then abruptly cracked her whip towards Shi Feng's skull. The flame whip transformed into a streak of flowing light as it swung towards Shi Feng's cranium. Queen's Whip This was the melee skill that the Scorching Lamia often used. If an MT of the same level did not possess the Flaming Sun's blessing, this single whip could instantly kill him. In addition, this skill was a wide-range AoE skill, and it had a maximum attack range of 25 yards. If players wished to use the advantage of numbers to deal with the Scorching Lamia, they would quickly find themselves cremated by her whip. After all, even an MT could not block this attack, let alone the other fragile classes. Faced with the incoming flame whip, Shi Feng sprung himself into the air and threw himself to the ground. Although he easily avoided the flame whip, the whip's flaming trail still singed Shi Feng, dealing slightly over minus 70 damage. However, Shi Feng took this chance to pull quite a distance away from the Sela. He then jumped and twisted his body in the air, throwing the blazing meteor at the Scorching Lamia. A red glow shot forth, accurately piercing the left arm that the Scorching Lamia was about to lift. The attack activated the rarely seen burning flames effect, immediately causing minus 754 damage and inflicting a negative status effect that caused minus 400 flame damage per second for 10 seconds. Simultaneously, the attack also interrupted the rhythm of the Scorching Lamia's next attack. Despicable human. I will capture you and make you my pet. Rage surfaced on the Sela's beautiful face. Immediately, she swung her tail with all her might. Her speed abruptly soared, instantly shortening the distance between Shi Feng and herself. Almost. Shi Feng took a look at the surrounding environment, abruptly halting his steps. 
He then turned to face the scorching Lania, throwing a basic frost grenade at her. Hard, iron-like rocks surrounded their current location, not a single drop of lava was visible. This terrain would greatly limit the scorching Lania's most powerful skill, Queen's Rage. This skill allowed her to command the surrounding lava, transforming it into a wave that engulfed everything in its path. Even if Shifeng had 123 points of fire resistance, he still couldn't endure this fierce move. The Queen's Rage was the Scorching Lamia's ultimate team wipe skill. Aside from the Queen's Rage, Shifeng also needed to be careful of the arrows from the Scorching Snake Lady's bow, as this attack caused a combination of physical and flame damage. The Flaming Sun's Blessing did not provide any physical damage reduction. Hence, Shifeng could, at most, take two hits from her arrows before saying goodbye to his life. Hence, he needed to treat them with care. Chapter 206, High Lord Ranked Battle Due to the frost grenade's effects, a layer of snow covered the black, charred land. Meanwhile, the scorching Lamia's tail had frozen to the ground, her motions halted as a result. A hint of fury surfaced on her beautiful countenance. She raised her right hand, pointing a finger at Shifeng. Immediately, a large gathering of violent fire-type mana collected at her tender, jade-like finger. This was one of Sela's skills, Flame Burst. Flame Burst had a two-second cast time, and it was a continuous attack skill that caused extremely high fire-type damage to the target. It could practically instant kill a top-tier MT with full HP, and even if the MT possessed the Flaming Sun's Blessing, he would still receive a ton of damage. Watching the flames gathering at the Scorching Lamia's fingertip grow more violent, Shi Feng immediately activated Defensive Blade. His eyes focused on the ferocious flames, and the instant she launched her attack, Shi Feng simultaneously attacked with the Blazing Meteor. He intended to interrupt, or at least delay, the Scorching Lamia's assault. In God's domain, players could dodge spell attacks. However, they needed an accurate grasp on the timing of the attack. Otherwise, whether dodging a second too late or too early, the attack might land on its target. As casting spells would provide the caster with a lagging advantage, the caster could gain a clear grasp of their target's movements before launching their attacks. If players dodged before the spell released, they would become an easier target. Hence, the best time to dodge a spell was the moment the spell was released. However, once a spell discharged, it would travel to its target with blinding speed, making it extremely challenging to dodge. Of course, if players had very fast movement speeds, they could utilize that speed to their advantage, preventing the enemy caster from getting a firm lock on them. When faced with the High Lord rank Scorching Lamia, however, it was beneficial to have such thoughts. Shi Feng sent attack after attack with the Blazing Meteor, causing a series of damages of minus 743, minus 1502, minus 751, and minus 749. Although the damages looked awesome at first glance, to sell as 500,000 HP, they were just a drop in the bucket. The Scorching Lamia also had a frightening battle recovery, so in reality, Shi Feng did not cause any significant damage to her at all. However, as he had triggered the knockback effect of the Blazing Meteor, Shi Feng managed to interrupt the casting time of the Scorching Lamia's Flame Burst. I will burn your soul with the flames of God. The Scorching Lamia's smile was imposing. At this moment, the tip of her jade-like finger suddenly shone with a dazzling light, illuminating the entire cave. The temperature within the cave also increased by several folds. The light on Sela's finger was like a miniature sun. Suddenly, streak after streak of searing, white flames shot out from the scorching Lamia's fingertip. One streak after another, the flames bombarded Shi Feng like a heavy machine gun. The instant Sela launched her flames, Shi Feng used his evasive maneuvers. However, he was still a step too late. In the blink of an eye, one of the flames struck him, robbing the defensive blade of one of its limited charges. Although the first streak hit its target, Shi Feng dodged both the second and third. The flames scraped past Shi Feng's clothes, striking the rock wall behind him. Boom. Boom. The wall, which was normally as hard as steel, was as soft as water when struck by the white flames. Not to mention easily piercing through the rock wall, the flames even formed a 1 meter wide and 10 meter deep tunnel into the rock wall. What was even more shocking was that the tunnel seemed polished. The walls of the tunnel were smooth and sparkling, giving it a metallic sheen. This was the result of those molten white flames. If Shi Feng had not used the defensive blade to block that attack, he would have evaporated out of existence. Although this was not the first time Shi Feng had encountered this attack, he would still feel his heart skip a beat each time he witnessed this frightening power. This was the strength of a High Lord. A battle with a High Lord ranked boss was no ordinary battle. Instead, it was a superhuman battle that could cause the destruction and reformation of the surrounding terrain. When the bombardment ended, Shi Feng had exhausted the remaining charges on the defensive blade. However, the Scorching Lamia had halted her steps for quite a while now. Due to Shi Feng constantly throwing frost grenades at her, Sela could only take out her bow and attack with her fire arrows. Compared to the flame burst, these fire arrows were much easier to dodge. Shi Feng managed to attack with the blazing meteor while simultaneously dodging the fire arrows, steadily depleting the scorching Lamia's HP. However, Sela was no fool. She, too, knew how to dodge. Only, due to her frozen body, very rarely did she manage to dodge or block against an attack. 
Over an hour had passed, and Shi Feng didn't even know how many times he had thrown the blazing meteor. In the meantime, the scorching Lamia's HP gradually decreased, finally reaching 80%. During this time, the scorching Lamia had cast up to 9 flame bursts and queen's whips, but Shi Feng defended against all of them with either defensive blade or parry. At one point, a flame burst nearly killed Shi Feng. Fortunately, he quickly used an intermediate recovery potion, replenishing much of his missing HP. Although constantly attacking and dodging made the battle seem tedious, it would still be extremely worthwhile if such a tedious task allowed Shi Feng to kill a high lord ranked boss. A high lord ranked boss's drops were normally bountiful, and at the very minimum, it would drop a fine gold ranked item. There was even the possibility of dropping several dark gold ranked items. Fine gold rank or dark gold rank, players at this stage of the game could only dream of possessing either. Not to mention, before Shi Feng had even reached level 25, he already had a reliable source for level 25 equipment. After landing attack after attack on the Scorching Lamia, the Burning Flame's effect had stacked up to 5 times, causing Sela to lose 2000 HP per second. The damage was just right to combat the Scorching Lamia's battle recovery. Suddenly, the Scorching Lamia's HP started rapidly decreasing. After another 2 hours, the Scorching Lamia's HP fell to 23%. If Shi Feng continued with this pace, the battle would conclude in, at most, 1 hour. At that thought, Shi Feng's hands moved faster as he further increased his attack rate. At this moment, Shi Feng's system communication suddenly rang, the caller was stabbing heart of the Assassin's Alliance. By now, Shi Feng had already gotten used to dodging Sela's attacks after repeating the process so many times. Since he had nothing better to do, he accepted the call. Brother Ye Feng, I wonder if I can request your help on a matter. Stabbing heart spoke without adding any unnecessary flattery, getting right to the point. However, he immediately felt surprised by his own actions in suddenly seeking Shi Feng's help. After all, an expert's time was extremely valuable. Not to mention, the competition in White River City right now was far more intense than the competition in Red Leaf City in the past. After all, when all was said and done, Red Leaf Town only had a player base 20,000 to 30,000 in the past. Meanwhile, White River City had over a million players right now. Adding to the fact that plenty of experts had gathered at White River City, the intensity of the competition there had increased by several times. Help! I wonder what Brother Stabbing Heart needs me to do? Shi Feng asked. It's like this. I wish to invite you to raid a team dungeon with us. If we have the help of an expert like Brother Ye Feng, we will have a very high possibility of clearing the dungeon. Stabbing Heart was clearly embarrassed for asking. Which team dungeon is it? Don't tell me that you're looking at one of the three level 10 large scale dungeons. Shi Feng was slightly astonished. He did not think that Stabbing Heart would look to him for help with a dungeon. Regarding the three large scale dungeons, Shi Feng had no intentions of involving himself with them. After all, it would have a huge impact on the course of history. His first clear of Dark Moon Graveyard had already affected the progression of history. If he helped the Assassin's Alliance obtain the first clear of a large-scale team dungeon, God knew if something out of his control would happen in the future. Large-scale team dungeons were worlds apart from normal team dungeons. Their difficulty was directly increased by two to three levels. Even if Shi Feng gave his help, with the current state of the Assassin's Alliance, they could not even clear the normal mode of the dungeon. Chapter 207, Killing the Queen Shi Feng did not want this timeline to develop out of his control. If Stabbing Heart really wanted to raid one of the three great dungeons, he could only sternly refuse. Stabbing Heart shook his head, faintly exclaiming, it isn't one of the three great dungeons. It is just one of the 20 men team dungeons, the Beastman Munition Factory. That is a level 10 to level 13 team dungeon, and the equipment drop there would be of great help to us when we raid the three large scale dungeons. Although we've already cleared the normal mode of that dungeon, the hard mode is simply too difficult. We have been stuck at the first boss all this time, so we wish to seek your aid. Shi Feng's heart was slightly moved when he heard of the words, Beastman Munition Factory. That dungeon did indeed possess a lot of valuable items, especially the basic fire resistance potion recipe and the level 10 swordsman set equipment, wind extinguisher. It would not be a bad idea to make a trip there for these items. Fine, but I have a demand, Shi Feng said. Brother Ye Feng, there is no need to hold back. Stabbing heart released a sigh of relief after hearing Shi Feng's agreement. He was deeply afraid that Shi Feng would refuse. I want all the recipes and forging designs we obtain from the dungeon. In addition, I want priority over all swordsman equipment. If you can agree to these conditions, I will have no problem offering my assistance, Shi Feng listed his demands. Stabbing Heart carefully considered Shi Feng's words. If he were the one leading the team this time, he wouldn't hesitate to agree to Shi Feng's demands. However, the leader of the team this time was the guild leader of the Assassin's Alliance, Cruel Sword. So, Stabbing Heart had no authority to make this decision. Brother Ye Feng, I have to consult with the guild leader about this matter. Can I give you a reply sometime later? Stabbing Heart said with less confidence. Sure. 
In any case, Shi Feng was not in a hurry. There was still some time before he could kill the scorching Lamia. After Stabbing Heart disconnected the call, he immediately went up to the guild leader, Cruel Sword. Cruel Sword was currently a short distance away, clearing the monsters in the dungeon. Based on appearance alone, Cruel Sword looked very young, and his tall and robust body seemed full of energy. In actuality, he was already 39 years old. Normally, he wore a stern expression, and he would always look at others with an intimidating and penetrating gaze. His ferocious appearance was just like that of a warrior about to enter a battlefield. In fact, Cruel Sword was a mercenary in reality. However, he had long since retired from his squad. After his retirement, he joined the then weak Assassin's Alliance, and after enduring over 10 years of hardships, he finally managed to turn the Assassin's Alliance into an apex second-rate guild, gaining plenty of support and sponsors from large corporations. How did your negotiations with him go? Cruel Sword turned his head and glanced at Stabbing Heart, asking sternly. Previously, the Assassin's Alliance had been stuck at the first boss of the hard mode Beastman Munition Factory. Hence, Stabbing Heart suggested recruiting a god-ranked expert to help them. However, Cruel Sword felt that it was beneath him to do such a thing. What god-ranked expert? Everyone's just blindly overestimating him. If it weren't for the fact that Stabbing Heart had performed extremely well in recent days and been promoted to an elder of the guild, Cruel Sword would not have let Stabbing Heart contact Shi Feng at all. He agrees to come, but he has a demand. He wants all of the swordsman equipment and the forging designs and recipes that drop. Stabbing Heart carefully said, however, I feel that Ye Feng is worth this price. After all, even the Snow Goddess greatly valued his performance. After listening to these words, Cruel Sword's coarse eyebrows furrowed. He clearly felt dissatisfied about Shi Feng's demands. Boss Cruel Sword, Ye Feng is truly powerful. Without Shi Feng, the Snow Goddess, Gentle Snow, might not have even obtained the first clear of the Dark Moon graveyard, Stabbing Heart hurriedly said. Gentle Snow, is it? Cruel Sword's resolve slightly wavered after hearing this name. Just half an hour ago, Gentle Snow had shocked all players throughout the entire White River City region, Cruel Blade included. Gentle Snow had taken down the first clear of four level 10 party dungeons and two level 10 small scale team dungeons. Moreover, it wasn't the first clear of hard mode, but the first clear of hell mode. Simultaneously, her achievements signified the gap between her and the other guilds growing even larger. Moreover, Cruel Sword received information that Gentle Snow had already begun raiding the hell mode of a 20 man team dungeon. If Gentle Snow really succeeded, she would no longer occupy the same playing field as the other guilds within the White River City region. It seems that Ye Feng indeed has some capabilities. Since that is the case, agree to his demands. Cruel Sword was very curious about Shi Feng now. He wondered if Shi Feng was truly as strong as Stabbing Heart described him. In truth, Cruel Sword did not want any outsiders participating in the guild's expedition. However, the Assassin's Alliance's position in White River City was becoming more insignificant as time passed. Ignoring the first-rate guild, Auroboros, even the third-rate guild, Dark Star, would soon surpass them. The severity of this matter further increased due to the sudden appearance of that lone tyrant, who occupied the first position on the ranking list. Dark Star then continued to successfully raid the hard mode of two small-scale team dungeons, greatly increasing their fame and surpassing the other guilds. On the other hand, aside from obtaining the first clear of several normal mode dungeons, the Assassin's Alliance had yet to even obtain the first clear of a single hard mode dungeon. Hence, Cruel Sword had personally organized an elite team to raid the Beastman Munition Factory. He intended to take this chance to obtain the first clear of a hard mode dungeon, increasing the guild's influence in White River City and ending the gossip of Assassin's Alliance's inferiority to Dark Star. Hearing Cruel Sword's command, Stabbing Heart immediately contacted Shi Feng, excited. Brother Ye Feng, our guild leader has agreed to your demands. I wonder if you can come here immediately. Stabbing Heart asked. At this moment, Shi Feng still battled the Scorching Lamia, so how could he possibly leave now? Making a rough estimate, he said, I still have some matters to attend to right now. I'll need around two hours before I can hurry over. All right, then let's meet up at the entrance of the Beastman Munition Factory in two hours. Although Stabbing Heart wanted Shi Feng to arrive as soon as possible, Stabbing Heart did not dare insist on the matter since Shi Feng had his own matters to attend. After all, it was already stunning that Shi Feng would willingly help them out. All right. I'll be there in two hours. Shi Feng disconnected the call, resuming his barrage of attacks on Sela. Just after the Scorching Lamia's HP fell below 20%, a change suddenly overcame her previously beautiful appearance. Crimson Red Sacred Runes suddenly appeared on her jade white skin, releasing a frightening magic power. Moreover, her red gemstone like eyes released a brilliant white light. Immediately, the Flame God's cave trembled. Cracks appeared on the ground, and very quickly, these cracks widened into large fissures that spewed molten magma. The lava formed a river as it moved and spread throughout the ground. This was the Scorching Lamia's strongest skill. Queen's Rage Fortunately, Shi Feng had long since lured Sela to this location. 
Otherwise, the lava that spewed from the ground would not be limited to a single river. It would form a great ocean that could instantly turn tens of thousands of players into ashes, becoming fertilizer for this great piece of land. Immediately, Shi Feng activated gravity liberation. He jumped up into the air, and like a cannonball, he shot forth towards a rock wall some 10 meters away, successfully avoiding the incoming surge of lava. Approximately half a minute passed before the lava fully receded. However, the land was still dyed a crimson red, releasing piping hot steam into the air and the surrounding environment. If an average player set foot on this land, they would lose at least 500 HP every second in the best case scenario. However, Shi Feng was different. He had 123 points in fire resistance so he could completely ignore the ground's high temperature. After he landed, he immediately resumed his attacks on the Scorching Lamia. It was extremely exhausting for Sela to cast Queen's Rage. So, after using the skill, she would enter a period of weakness. During this period, she would not have any attack power remaining, and it was the best time for Shi Feng to kill her. If Shi Feng waited for the land to recover its normal state, the Scorching Lamia would have also recovered from her weakened state. In addition, her HP would also recover to 30% or above. The Scorching Lamia in a weakened state stood no chance against Shi Feng. The Blazing Meteor caused over minus 1,500 damage to Sela with every strike, with the occasional critical hit causing over minus 3,000 damage. 18% 16% 14% 12% by the time the Scorching Lamia had broken away from her weakened state, she only had 10% of her HP remaining. In the end, the Scorching Lamia entered a Berserk state, and her damage increased by several folds. However, with Shi Feng's Frost Grenades controlling her movements from beginning to end, Sela could not display her frightening might in melee combat at all. After another 10 minutes or so, the Scorching Lamia released a blood-curdling scream as her body fell to the ground. Instantly, Shi Feng's level increased by 1, reaching 17% of level 16. The bountiful EXP even shocked Shi Feng. Shi Feng then heard the sound of an explosion, and a large amount of flame crystals, equipment, and items appeared in place of the Scorching Lamia's body. Chapter 208, Beastman Munition Factory It really is great to have the Shadow's Blessing. Shi Feng's eyes slightly twitched as he looked at the shining loot scattered across the ground. It was the first time he truly felt fortunate about the three points of luck. It seems that I should get more equipment that increases the luck attribute in the future. I can use it specifically when killing bosses. If he obtained jackpots similar to the Scorching Lamias as well, accumulating wealth would be a very simple task. In God's Domain, the term jackpot only applied to boss monsters, since bosses would give out more loot than usual. Normally, the number of items dropped was double or triple the usual amount, and players looked forward to such situations the most. Unfortunately, aside from obtaining the first clear of a dungeon, the chances of a boss dropping a jackpot were abysmally low. Depending on a player's luck attribute, the chances of obtaining a jackpot would also increase. However, Shi Feng did not know the exact value each point of luck provided. He only knew that the higher the luck, the greater were the chances of obtaining a jackpot. If Shi Feng's luck increased to 10 points, he might obtain another jackpot if he killed a high lord ranked boss in the future. To players, nothing was more exciting than obtaining even more high level equipment and items. As this was the flame god's cave, the scorching Lamia's jackpot was extremely valuable. It was much more beneficial than killing 2 to 3 high lord ranked bosses. This is ridiculous. Just a single Scorching Lamia dropped close to half of my previous harvest of flame crystals. Shi Feng was immediately shocked after he collected and arranged all the loot. Previously, he had only obtained a total of 223 flame crystals from killing many level 25 common, elite, and special elite monsters. Yet, the Scorching Lamia gave him 102 crystals. If converted to gold coins, that amount would be worth 15 gold, 30 silvers. Moreover, this was only the price of the flame crystals. Compared to the flame crystals, the equipment and forging designs dropped were much more valuable. Aren't these the flame boots? Shi Feng noticed a flame red colored, delicate pair of boots. There were three gorgeous flame crystals embedded into each side, giving the boots a dazzling appearance. Flame boots, plate boots, dark gold rank. Level 25. Defense plus 175. Strength plus 21, agility plus 30, endurance plus 15. Movement speed plus 8. Fire resistance plus 5. Additional skill. Flame rush, increases movement speed by 100% for 10 seconds. Cooldown, 2 minutes. Just the value of this piece of equipment exceeded 20 gold. In addition, Sela also dropped a dark gold ranked shield. Light of day, shield, dark gold rank. Level 25. Equipment requirement, strength 130. Defense plus 665. Block rate, 41%. Defense skill level plus 2. Strength plus 34, agility plus 10, endurance plus 32. 
Maximum HP plus 15%. Additional passive skill. Guardian Heart reduces incoming damage from the front by 20%. In addition, all damage received reduced by 10%. Not to mention a shield, equipment meant for MTS was usually abnormally expensive. Moreover, the attributes of the shield were extremely beneficial. If sold, its minimum price would be at least 40 gold. Aside from those two dark gold ranked items, there were seven secret silver ranked items. Three of them were level 25 mage equipment, two were level 25 healer equipment, one was level 25 leather armor, and the last was a level 25 two-handed axe. Every piece could sell for at least three gold coins. Meanwhile, the most precious of them all was the Raging Flames armor forging design. This was also Shifeng's first time seeing this item. Shifeng was immediately stunned when he read the introduction of this forging design. The Raging Flames armor was a level 25 secret silver ranked plate armor. Although its base attributes were ordinary, it was a very valuable item. It specifically catered to MTS when dealing with fire-type monsters. One could say that the Raging Flames armor was the best level 25 secret silver ranked breastplate. If utilized properly, the value of this forging design could exceed 100 gold. However, flame crystals were necessary to craft the Raging Flames armor. In addition, it also needed a rare secret silver ranked ore, resulting in a high manufacturing cost. However, it would be greatly desired once forged. In particular, when it was used in a level 25 large-scale team dungeon, Flame's Nest, it would be frighteningly effective. The Raging Flame's breastplate gave 8 points of fire resistance and reduced the user's flame damage received by 20%. No other secret silver equipment could compare to this effect. Aside from the equipment, there was also a flame red colored skill book. The words Flame Burst decorated the cover. This was the same skill the Scorching Lamia had used on Shi Feng. Shi Feng had personally witnessed this attack and knew full well the frightening might of that skill. Yet, such a skill was unexpectedly a universal skill that any class could learn. Without hesitation, Shi Feng chose to learn the skill. He then called out the skill interface. Flame Burst Level 1 requires 100,000 EXP to upgrade to level 2. Channeling time, 2 seconds. Gathers the power of flames to a single point and causes 300% damage to the target. Attack count, 4 times. Cooldown, 5 minutes. Compared to other skills that required skill proficiency to level up, Flame Burst belonged to the Special Skills category. Instead of skill proficiency, it required EXP to level up. Shi Feng greatly admired Sela's Flame Burst. If he could possess a similar might to the Scorching Lamia when he used the Flame Burst, he needed only a single move to instant kill a player of the same level. Just the thought of achieving such a feat invigorated him. However, the skill level was too low right now. It could not achieve such an effect in all. Since his level was relatively high right now and his leveling speed was also very fast, Shi Feng did not feel much heartache towards such a small amount of EXP. Hence, he immediately supplied 100,000 EXP to the skill, upgrading it up to level 2. The flame burst's damage increased to 350%, while the attack count remained unchanged. There was also no change to its cooldown. This time, 300,000 EXP was needed to upgrade the skill to level 3. However, Shi Feng chose to upgrade it without hesitation. He needed several million EXP just to level up now, so 300,000 was not a significant amount. Instantly, Shi Feng fell back down to level 15. The damage of the level 3 flame burst increased to 380%, while its attack count increased to 5 times, and cooldown decreased to 4 minutes 30 seconds. This was a more noticeable improvement. Meanwhile, it now required 800,000 EXP to upgrade to level 4. Yet, Shi Feng still chose to upgrade it. The damage of the skill increased to 400%, attack count remained at 5 times, and cooldown decreased to 4 minutes. The skill needed 2 million EXP to upgrade to level 5 this time. Shi Feng similarly upgraded it to level 5 without hesitation. The damage of Flame Burst increased to 420%, attack count increased to 6 times, and cooldown decreased to 3 minutes 30 seconds. As a result of such a huge increase, however, Shi Feng had fallen to level 14. If he wanted to upgrade the skill to level 6, he needed to supply 4 million EXP. Even if he dropped back down to level 0, he could not raise Flame Burst to level 6. It seems that I can only wait until after level 20 before upgrading the flame burst again. Shi Feng felt it was unfortunate. However, a level 5 flame burst was sufficiently amazing already. It was certainly a very useful trump card. Shi Feng had spent quite a sum of money on his trip to the flame god's cave this time. Not to mention using more than two stacks of basic frost grenades, he also used the flaming sun scripture. However, with such an astonishing harvest, the losses he incurred were negligible. There's still some time left. I'll get some rest before heading to the beastman munition factory. Shi Feng called out the system clock, discovering that he still had some time before the appointed time. Seizing this chance, he could get some repairs done to his equipment and store his loot into the bank. He would return to the Flame God's Cave again in the future when he had the time. The boss of the Flame God's Cave had a respawn time of two days. 
In other words, Shi Feng would return to the Flame God's cave to kill its boss once every two days. Not only could he level up quickly by doing so, but he could also obtain plenty of high-level equipment. This place was sacred ground for players. It was no wonder the ranger, who was the first person to discover this place, made a huge earning. Outside of the Beastman Munition Factory, Cruel Blade and the others had already gathered at the dungeon's entrance. They currently discussed their strategy to raid the dungeon. During the time they spent waiting for Shi Feng, they challenged the dungeon twice more. However, the end result was still the same. Obtaining the first clear of a hard mode team dungeon was much more difficult than they had imagined. Although they had managed to clear the hard mode of a 10-man team dungeon, some other guild was already a step ahead of them by the time they cleared it. Right now, only the first clears of 20-man hard mode team dungeons were available. However, the hard mode of a 20-man team dungeon was obviously more difficult compared to a 10-man team dungeon. No matter how much thought they put into it, they could not come up with any methods to clear the dungeon. They could only wait for Shi Feng's arrival at the dungeon's entrance. This was also a good chance for the team to get some rest. Although Stabbing Heart had continuously recommended Shi Feng, Cruel Blade did not place much hope in him. After all, the Assassin's Alliance was an apex second-rate guild. Experts were a dime a dozen within the guild. Meanwhile, they had gathered 20 experts to raid the Beastman Munition Factory, but they still died under the first boss feat. What difference would an additional, independent player with good techniques make? Guild leader, someone's coming, one of the guild scouting assassins suddenly spoke in the team chat. Chapter 209, Lone Tyrant Hearing that someone approached, Stabbing Heart thought that it was Shi Feng. Hence, he turned his gaze towards the entrance. However, the person walking over was not Shi Feng at all. Moreover, it was not just a single player, but a group of players. This was a 20-man team. The members of this team all wore impressive equipment, practically all of them wore a mix of bronze and mysterious iron equipment, with the majority being mysterious iron equipment. There were also a few players among them wearing level 10 class specific set equipment that only dropped from level 10 team dungeons. Although they were only individual pieces, at this stage of the game, they were definitely considered top tier equipment to guilds. The leader of this team was a guardian knight. Judging by appearances, the man looked to be around 25 years of age. There was a nasty smile on the man's face. The man wore a mix of red and white colored heavy armor and carried a blood red cross shield and long sword. It can't be, right? That shield warrior has the complete bloody brilliant set equipment. That's a level 10 mysterious iron set equipment. The glow from his shield and long sword show that they are both of secret silver rank. How come I have never seen such equipment before? The members of Assassin's Alliance started a quiet discussion when they saw the leading guardian knight. The bloody brilliant set equipment could only be obtained from level 10 hard mode team dungeons. The fact that this group of newcomers had gathered a full set displayed just how powerful their team was. They seemed to be players from Dark Star. Making a careful observation, Stabbing Heart suddenly discovered that the guild emblem these players donned belonged to that of the guild, Dark Star. He then observed the leading Guardian Knight, suddenly exclaiming in shock, he's Dark Star's lone tyrant. Cruel Sword's complexion immediately turned grim at these words. Lone Tyrant of Dark Star was currently number one on the ranking list. In addition, Dark Star had also managed to obtain the first clear of two hard mode dungeons. Due to the contribution of these two factors, Dark Star was already like the sun at high noon, and they were currently in their heyday. Cruel Sword did not think that Dark Star would make their move so soon, they were already attempting to raid a 20-man team dungeon. If they really obtained the first clear of a 20-man team dungeon, the Assassin's Alliance would truly be in an embarrassing position in White River City. After all, due to obtaining the luxury guidebook of White River City in advance, the Assassin's Alliance had made ample preparations before entering the city itself. As a result, they enjoyed a flourishing period after they entered White River City. Many players even thought that the Assassin's Alliance had the possibility to surpass the first-rate guilds. Hence, now that Dark Star was on the rise, players would naturally compare the Assassin's Alliance and Dark Star, resulting in the Assassin's Alliance's status in White River City becoming very awkward. Oh! Isn't this the guild leader of the Assassin's Alliance? What a coincidence. Lone Tyrant laughed as he spoke to Cruel Sword, Unfortunately, you guys have simply wasted your time by coming here, as the first clear of the hard mode Beastman Munition Factory already belongs to Dark Star. The other members of Dark Star similarly revealed disdainful smiles as they looked at the members of the Assassin's Alliance. Currently, throughout the White River City region, Dark Star's influence surpassed that of the Assassin's Alliance. Moreover, Dark Star had a much shorter history than the Assassin's Alliance. The Assassin's Alliance's current success lay in the fact that they had a long-established history, so the benefits they provided to their guild members were slightly better. However, Dark Star would definitely surpass the Assassin's Alliance in the future. We'll see about that. Cruel Sword ignored Lone Tyrant's provocation, only coldly replying with a single sentence. Only by personally experiencing it would one understand the difficulty of a 20-man hard mode dungeon. It would be meaningless to argue with a little bastard over who would obtain the first clear of a hard mode dungeon. When Lone Tyrant saw that his provocation had failed, he quickly lost interest and turned to leave. 
At this moment, a deep and low voice resounded by everyone's ears. Sorry, I'm late. The person speaking was precisely Shi Feng. As he had to repair his equipment, store his items in the bank, and register more hard stones on the auction house, he had wasted quite a lot of time before coming here. Brother Ye Feng, you're finally here. Stabbing Heart, who was originally enraged due to Lone Tyrant's provocation, immediately cheered up when he noticed Shi Feng's arrival. He hurriedly went up and welcomed Shi Feng. Meanwhile, this was the first time Cruel Sword had personally met Shi Feng. He discovered that Shi Feng still used a complete bronze set equipment. Shi Feng's level and the quality of his other equipment were also indiscernible. Moreover, looking at Shi Feng's age and appearance, he was obviously just an immature youth, he did not possess the sharp temperament of a top-tier expert at all. However, he had obtained the first clear of the Hell Mode Dark Moon Graveyard with Gentle Snow. Coupling that with the widespread battle footage from before and the fact that Shi Feng was the first player to enter White River City, Shi Feng should possess some real skills. However, they were not here to fight other players in the dungeon. Although Shi Feng had impressive combat capabilities, one could not clear a dungeon by depending on combat capabilities alone. Hence, Cruel Sword did not look favorably upon Shi Feng. Ha 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 ha. What a joke. So even the famous Assassin's Alliance has to invite someone to raid a team dungeon. Moreover, you've even invited an independent player. It seems that the Assassin's Alliance only amounts to this much. To think that I've always thought of the Assassin's Alliance as an actual opponent, I was truly blind. Lone Tyrant looked at Shi Feng, then turned to look at Cruel Sword again before involuntarily laughing. You. Stabbing Heart wanted to flare up in rage, however, he had no counter to Lone Tyrant's words. After all, what he said was true. The other Assassin's Alliance members had also lowered their heads in shame. At this moment, their hearts harbored dissatisfaction towards Stabbing Heart. They were already disappointed with Stabbing Heart's previous decision of inviting Shi Feng, so the humiliating situation now only made it worse. Yet, although they wished they could immediately chase Shi Feng away, they dared not voice their opinions. After making fun of the Assassin's Alliance, Lone Tyrant's gaze shifted towards Shi Feng. Pretending to be surprised, he sneered and said, and here I thought the Assassin's Alliance had invited some amazing person. Isn't this Ye Feng, the first player to enter White River City and the previous first place on the ranking list? I am truly sorry about this. I never imagined that you would be so easy to surpass, so I accidentally snatched away your first position. Oh. That's not right. Why can't I find your name within the top 100 of the ranking list? It seems that there is a limit to a person's good luck. Without any real strength, one would quickly be surpassed by others. Isn't that right, little brother Ye Feng? Although Lone Tyrant could not see Shi Feng's current level, he did not think that Shi Feng was anything amazing. Otherwise, why would he choose not to display his level? There was only one possibility for such an action, and it was because he was too shameful to show his level. Shi Feng was clearly the first player to enter White River City, yet, a majority of players surpassed him in levels. So it was very logical that he would choose to hide his level in shame. Brother Ye Feng, let's just ignore him and enter the dungeon. Afraid that Shi Feng would grow angry and leave, Stabbing Heart hurriedly dragged Shi Feng away from the players of Dark Star. The players within the White River City region have constantly used the Assassin's Alliance as a comparison to Dark Star. Previously, I had felt proud of this matter, but now, I can only feel embarrassment. Please don't associate Dark Star with you all anymore in the future. We really can't bear this sort of shame. Lone Tyrant did not care much about an expert who was already past his prime. He shifted his gaze once more to Cruel Sword, mocking him. An Apex second-rate guild. Pa. They aren't even comparable to a third-rate guild. The Assassin's Alliance has truly declined. If I were them, I would have long since killed myself to avoid the embarrassment. They have actually allowed a lucky noob to join their team. Did they think that, by doing so, they could obtain the first clear of the hard mode beastman munition factory? Who are they trying to kid? How could you say such a thing? This is known as birds of a feather flocking together. A trash of a guild would naturally seek out a trash player to aid them. If this situation happened in our guild, we would have long since expelled such noobs from the guild. Allowing such trash to join our team would definitely lower our intelligence and strength. Hey, you've got that wrong. In reality, the Assassin's Alliance is so powerful that they are not afraid of having a noob as a team member. They could still clear the hard mode beastman munition factory with no problems, even with such a member on their team. This is definitely something Dark Star can't dream of comparing with. The relationship between Dark Star and the Assassin's Alliance had long since been similar to that of fire and water. Now that there was such a good opportunity, the members of Dark Star took this chance to ridicule the Assassin's Alliance. Immediately, the atmosphere on the Assassin's Alliance's side became abnormally depressing. The players from the Assassin's Alliance all resentfully glared at Stabbing Heart. Contrary to expectations, however, Stabbing Heart did not feel any heartache due to these hateful gazes. Instead, he felt apologetic to Shi Feng. Originally, Dark Star merely directed its ridicule at the Assassin's Alliance. Now, even Shi Feng had been dragged into this matter. At this moment, Shi Feng could no longer stomach this situation. If this situation continued, they would have no chances of raiding the dungeon, and he did not wish to lose the opportunity. After all, he planned to obtain the wind extinguisher set equipment and basic fire resistance potion recipe from this trip. 
He did not wish to see Dark Star spoil this opportunity. Having no better choice, Shi Feng stood out from the crowd. With pupils as deep as black holes, he gazed at Lone Tyrant. He then calmly said with a smile, I'm very curious about something. If the nobodies that you've looked down on suddenly obtain the first clear of the hard mode beast munition factory a step ahead of you, then what would you all amount to? Chapter 210, Eye Opener Shi Feng's words struck Lone Tyrant and the others. Immediately, the atmosphere became incomparably tense. Neither side spoke a single word, and both sides stood on the cusp of lashing out right now. However, nobody intended to make the first move. After all, everyone present understood that, if they took action right now, it would lead to an all-out war between the two guilds. Regardless of who won and who lost in this confrontation, both sides would take heavy losses. Hence, be it cruel sword or lone tyrant, neither wished for such a situation to occur. As both sides could no longer endure the stifling atmosphere. Getting the hard modes first clear ahead of us. With trash like you. Lone tyrant's complexion abruptly turned cold. With a ridiculing smile, he spoke with contempt, good, very good. Let everyone see the truth, then. I really want to see if your strength is as good as that mouth of yours. After he finished speaking, Lone Tyrant led his team into the Beastman Munition Factory. Moreover, they chose to immediately start with the dungeon's hard mode without warm-up or preparation. They clearly wished to prove to Shi Feng and the Assassin's Alliance just how wide the difference between them was. Why are they trying to act so bold? They will suffer defeat when the time comes. Stabbing Heart curled his lips, revealing a cold smile. Without personally experiencing the 20-man hard mode beastman munition factory, one could not truly gauge the difficulty of the dungeon. Otherwise, they would not have sought Shi Feng's help. They had only chosen this method as a last resort. After all, the Assassin's Alliance was in a precarious position right now, and they were in dire need of a breakthrough. Hence, they had to obtain the first clear of a hard mode dungeon. That's right. Dark Star is nothing. They'll cry with regret once they enter the dungeon. Guild leader, let's hurry and enter. We must teach those bastards from Dark Star the strength of the Assassin's Alliance. That's right. Guild leader, we must get the first clear this time. The players from the Assassin's Alliance wiped away their depression from before. They all cracked their knuckles as their thirst for battle grew. Shi Feng remained silent as he listened to everyone's enthusiasm with a faint smile on his face. However, due to Shi Feng's actions, the guild leader of the Assassin's Alliance, Cruel Blade, viewed Shi Feng in a new light. Cruel Blade considered that Shi Feng might not just be all talk. Due to Shi Feng's provocation, the team's originally downcast mood received underwent a complete change. Right now, everyone was indignant over the injustice they had received rather than depressed, and they immediately wanted to charge into the dungeon and slaughter the boss within. They wanted to obtain the first clear of the hard mode dungeon, letting the players from Dark Star witness their might. However, Shi Feng did not give much thought to Cruel Sword's renewed opinion of him. After all, he had been a guild leader in his previous life as well. If one wanted to increase the unity of a team, they only needed one thing. They needed an enemy. In fact, Lone Tyrant was already an enemy of the Assassin's Alliance. Shi Feng merely poured some oil on the already burning fire, further raising their fighting spirits. Naturally, high fighting spirits were only a mental boost, and it would not help the Assassin's Alliance to clear the dungeon. If the Assassin's Alliance wanted to clear the hard mode team dungeon, they still needed some other key elements. However, Shi Feng did not reveal this fact. He merely quietly joined the Assassin's Alliance's team, entering the Beast Munition Factory with Cruel Sword and the others. The Beast Munition Factory was a dilapidated weapon manufacturing factory. Hence, the terrain inside the dungeon was not particularly complicated. Players only needed to walk down a single path to reach the boss. There were a total of three bosses throughout the dungeon. Although the number was low, each boss was extremely powerful. In 20-man hard mode team dungeons, the bosses were all high chieftain rank. Every one of them had powerful skills, and it was a normal occurrence for these bosses to instant kill an MT. If a team were not familiar with these bosses' skills, failing to grasp the timing of their attacks fully, it would not be strange for a team to team wipe over 10 times. In comparison to these bosses, however, players would have a much easier time clearing the elite monsters within the dungeon. I think that everyone should know what to do by now. However, since this is Brother Yefeng's first time entering this dungeon, I'll give you a short explanation on what you should expect later on. Your task is to go all out, dealing damage, while simultaneously evading the skills of the elite monsters. On another note, the monsters here have very high attack power, and they deal a ton of damage, even to the MTS. Moreover, these monsters are immune to crowd control skills. Hence, healers will be under a lot of pressure. They will have no time to heal anyone other than the MT, so you need to be careful not to pull aggro, Cruel Sword explained patiently. Alright, that's it for my explanation. Let's first use the four elite monsters guarding at the entrance as practice for our coordination. Finished speaking, Cruel Sword directed two of the team's MT to charge at the four axe-wielding level 10 elite Beastman Warriors. Beastman Warrior, Elite Rank Level 10 
HP 50,000 slash 50,000. As this was a dungeon, the monsters in here had both their HP and attack power greatly increased. They were much stronger compared to the level 10 elite monsters out in the fields. One of the two MTS was a shield warrior, while the other was a guardian knight. Each of them held the two monsters aggro. However, when Shi Feng saw the damage these two MTS dealt to the monsters, he was immediately stunned. A normal attack from the shield warrior only dealt minus 32 damage to the beastman warriors. When the shield warrior used heroic strike, he only dealt minus 66 damage. Meanwhile, the guardian knight fared even worse than the shield warrior. The guardian knight's normal attack only dealt minus 24 damage, while his divine strike only dealt minus 51 damage. Both of these MTS were level 10 players, and both of them wielded mysterious iron weapons. Even if it were a one-handed weapon, when faced with an elite monster of the same level, it should not deal such little damage. Thus, Shi Feng was shocked by this sight he witnessed. Although the two MTS took care to evade the attacks of the monsters, they were very clumsy. As a result, the number of attacks they received exceeded the number of times they dodged. Moreover, each time they received an attack, they needed to retreat a few steps before they could stabilize themselves. The only fortunate thing was that the damage they received was not high, they received around minus 300 damage from each attack. Meanwhile, each MT possessed around 2400 HP. With two monsters attacking each MT simultaneously, each MT received a rough total of minus 600 damage, a quarter of their total HP. This situation resulted in the healer's suffering. However, Shi Feng was similarly shocked when he discovered that both MTS possessed around 2400 HP. What the heck? Isn't their HP a little too high? They both couldn't have only added their free attribute points into endurance, completely ignoring strength and agility, right? However, this was the only explanation that made sense. It explained why, even though both MTS were clearly gaming experts, they required so much effort just to dodge an attack and why their damages were so pitiful. In contrast, a level 10 assassin, who similarly used a one-handed weapon, could deal over minus 100 damage to an elite monster like the Beastman Warrior. They could even deal over minus 200 damage if they used a skill. The MT's strength was just abysmal. Their agility was similarly too low, preventing them from dodging attacks that they could have clearly evaded. It was obvious that the players of the Assassin's Alliance have yet to adapt to the battle methods of God's Domain. They clearly possessed plenty of expert players, yet, they were unable to exhibit their full potential. It was no wonder the Assassin's Alliance became an obscure existence during the early stages of the game. Only after half a year had passed since God's Domain's launch did they gain some achievements. If the Assassin's Alliance battled the boss of the Beastman Munition Factory like so, Shi Feng would be surprised if they didn't team wipe. It was truly a wonder as to how they managed to clear a 10-man hard mode team dungeon. I wish to say something, is that all right? Shi Feng looked at Cruel Sword, asking softly. Although the Assassin's Alliance now possessed Lone Tyrant as a great enemy, the members of the team still had negative opinions of Shi Feng. They only kept their mouths shut due to his relationship with Stabbing Heart. However, if Shi Feng dared push his luck, they would not sit idle. Speak your mind. As long as it benefits the dungeon raid, we will not reject it. Cruel Sword had managed to discern Shi Feng's capability somewhat. He could somewhat understand why Gentle Snow would take a fancy to Shi Feng. After all, Shi Feng indeed possessed strength. Can we replace the two MTS? Shi Feng asked, holding nothing back. Chapter 212, Raiding Karu. Translator, Hellside underscore. Editor, Hellside underscore. By taking turns attacking Karur, the two Guardian Knights quickly established a stronghold on Karur's aggro. However, compared to when they battled elite monsters, the pressure on the healers had visibly increased. Moreover, both Water Lake and White Feather were clearly unfamiliar with the boss's attack patterns, their movements were somewhat stiff when dodging attacks. Right now, they could only dodge every other scent at them. Even so, compared to the last time the Assassin's Alliance had raided Karur, the healers were having a slightly easier time keeping these MTS alive. The healers' mana consumption made this obvious. Originally, Cruel Sword still worried that the two Guardian Knights could not manage. However, based on the results before him, it was clearly an unnecessary thought. The healers managed themselves with perfect order right now, unlike the several raids before where they had to cast their heals desperately, without caring about any proper order. The four healers couldn't even catch their breaths unless they wanted the previous two MTS to die instantly. In reality, such failures were very common. In God's Domain, level 10 players had a large threshold to overcome. The levels before level 10 were merely an adaptation period. Once players reached level 10, they would no longer receive any preferential treatment. Hence, entering a level 10, 20-man hard mode team dungeon at level 10 was the equivalent of entering a level 5, 20-man hell mode team dungeon at level 5. How could it possibly be easy? In addition, bosses would have much higher intelligence. It would take a certain degree of skill to hold the aggro of a boss and prevent it from attacking the ranged classes and healers. MTS especially needed to know how to pin down and restrain the boss monsters, as just having aggro did not mean that the boss would only hit the MT. After all, even with aggro, boss monsters would still find an opportune moment to massacre the healers, the weakest players on the team. 
When this occurred, MTS had the task of restraining the boss, preventing it from attacking the healers. Hence, the requirements for an MT's techniques were very high. If the previous MTS were currently tanking the boss, they would fare much better than Water Lake and White Feather regarding techniques. They had simply made a mistake during the allocation of their free attribute points. However, there was no way to reset one's attribute points in God's domain, so these two players could only be replaced. Moreover, for a long time, these two players would have to allocate all the free attribute points they obtained from leveling up into both strength and agility. Otherwise, they would cripple their characters. Everyone, start attacking now. Berserkers and swordsmen, assist the MTS in blocking some attacks. Focus your attacks on the boss's weapons or arms, and aim your attacks where they can interrupt the boss's attack. As for ranged classes, focus on dealing as much damage as you can, Shi Feng commanded. Immediately, a group of players charged forward to give Karur a beating, while the ranged players launched their bombardment at Karur. Minus 124, minus 137, minus 108, minus 189, minus 175. One damage after another appeared above Karur's head. However, the damage was not particularly high. Among these, the highest damage dealt belonged to the Berserker, Cruel Sword. His normal attacks could deal around minus 266 damage with each hit, while a violent strike could deal up to minus 448 damage. Right behind Cruel Sword was Stabbing Heart. As Stabbing Heart was an assassin, his normal attacks could only deal around minus 120 damage with each hit. However, his attack rate was much faster than Cruel Sword's. Meanwhile, a 5-star Eviscerate decimated 587 HP from Karur. Ranking in third was the team's cute and lovable little sister, the Elementalist, Mu Ching. She was the captain of the Assassin's Alliance's Elementalist team, and her techniques were first-rate. She was also one of the famous female Elementalists in Star Moon Kingdom, she could rank within the top 100 Elementalists within Star Moon Kingdom. Every one of her attacks could deal around minus 300 to minus 400 damage, but due to her spells requiring a long time to cast, her overall damage was slightly less than the two aforementioned players. Originally, Cruel Sword had intended to say to Shi Feng, Look. Isn't our team's damage output powerful? Why don't you join our guild? The position of first vice leader will be yours if you do. However, when Cruel Sword saw Shi Feng charging at Karur, subsequently slashing his sword at Karur, Cruel Sword was immediately dumbfounded. His words shrunk back into a secluded location in his mind. Shi Feng's two casual slashes dealt damages of minus 395 and minus 376 to Karur. Immediately after, Shi Feng followed up with a level 10 chop. The skill achieved a critical hit, instantly causing minus 2137 damage to Karur. He then continued by using Thundering Flash, dealing damages of minus 643, minus 832, and minus 1102 to Karur, as well as inflicting a damage amplification effect. Shi Feng then abruptly jumped up into the air. As he descended, he smashed the Abyssal Blade covered in the power of thunder and fire down onto Karur's head. Suddenly, Karur let out a soul-piercing scream of pain. Thunder Flame Explosion instantly caused minus 3312 damage, and everyone on the team, aside from Shi Feng, became slack-jawed when they witnessed the scene. If Water Lake had not reacted quickly by using Mach, followed by Righteous Punishment, Shi Feng might have snagged most, if not all, of Karur's aggro. Stabbing Heart, just where did you find a swordsman expert as amazing as him? Mu Qing's exquisite lips parted as she gaped and involuntarily questioned Stabbing Heart. As Mu Qing had not started out in Red Leaf Town, she was not particularly knowledgeable about Shi Feng. Since the launch of God's Domain, she had always focused on leveling up and raiding dungeons. Even after she entered White River City, she had not met many players who could surpass her. Hence, Mu Qing naturally considered herself as a top-tier expert. However, Shi Feng had utterly shattered that belief. The highest damage she could deal was only around minus 700 points, and that was when she achieved a critical hit. Meanwhile, Shi Feng could casually deal over minus 700 damage with a single hit. Right now, he had even dealt over minus 3000 damage to a high chieftain-ranked boss. Mu Qing felt extremely embarrassed to think that she actually thought of herself as a top-tier expert. What a joke. Hee hee, isn't this big brother amazing? Shortly after I started playing God's Domain, I discovered Brother Yefeng's prowess. With such a massive damage output, the first clear of this hard mode dungeon will definitely be ours this time. Stabbing Heart gleefully said. After all, he was the one who had invited Shi Feng to this raid. Now that Shi Feng performed so valiantly, shocking everyone on the team, Stabbing Heart felt extremely proud. Scram. You're not Yefeng, what's there to be proud of? If you have the ability, then show me that you can deal over 1000 damage. Mu Qing glared at Stabbing Heart. Little sister Mu Qing, you think too highly of me. How can I compare to brother Yafeng? He is the publicly acknowledged god-ranked expert of White River City. His damage alone can trump over a dozen players. I would be satisfied if I had even a third of his damage. Stabbing Heart smiled bitterly. Shi Feng was a great expert just like Gentle Snow. He and Shi Feng were on entirely different levels, so how could he compare to Shi Feng? Previously, the players who still had some complaints about Shi Feng now had none. Shi Feng was simply too amazing. 
Not only were his attacks incredibly powerful, but the timing and techniques he applied to interrupt the boss's rhythm continuously were also praiseworthy. Every time one of Shi Feng's swords attacked Karur, his other sword would simultaneously strike at Karur's saber, shifting the boss's attack slightly. This situation allowed the two MTS to dodge Karur's attacks with far more ease, greatly reducing the burden on the healers. At this moment, everyone finally understood what a true swordsman was. Aside from having fierce attacks, Shi Feng could also nimbly assist the MT. With such a swordsman on the team, raiding the dungeon became much easier than before. By making a rough estimate, their chances of victory had risen by at least twofold. At this moment, Cruel Sword suddenly sent a private message to Mu Qing, Mu Qing, you're one of the great beauties in our guild. You can see how amazing Ye Feng is, it would be a shame not to recruit him into our guild. It wouldn't be too good for a brute like me to invite him directly. Can you use your charms to persuade him to join us? If you manage to pull Ye Feng into our guild, I can guarantee that your current treatment will increase by threefold, and you will also be promoted to an elder of the guild. Cruel Sword also tried to think of a few other methods to recruit Shi Feng into the Assassin's Alliance. However, he immediately discovered that the Assassin's Alliance did not have any great benefits to Shi Feng. With Shi Feng's techniques, even first-rate guilds would willingly wage a bloody battle with each other to recruit him. As for the price tag the Assassin's Alliance could offer, any first-rate guilds could easily double or triple the amount. Hence, the only option Cruel Sword had remaining was to play the relationship card. Looking at Shi Feng's age, he should only be in his early twenties. He was at the age where he should be both vigorous and passionate. Meanwhile, a great beauty like Mu Qing was perfect for this situation. Although Cruel Sword hated resorting to such methods, the competition in God's domain was just too intense. There were plenty of guilds using similar tactics. If he continued being conservative, he might regret it in the future. Guild leader, are you for real? Mu Qing excitedly asked. Of course, Cruel Sword earnestly replied. Guild leader, leave it to me. With this young lady's charm, I will definitely recruit Ye Feng into our guild. Mu Qing laughed coquettishly, her large eyes shifting towards Shi Feng. Cruel Sword had similarly notified Stabbing Heart of his plan. However, Stabbing Heart simply shook his head and smiled bitterly after he heard it. Stabbing Heart really wished to say, if even a saint like Gentle Snow and a demoness like Xiao Yuru failed to capture Ye Feng's heart, I'm afraid Mu Qing will not have any chances at all. Although Mu Qing was indeed a beauty as pretty as a flower, when Stabbing Heart gazed at Mu Qing's flat chest and recalled Gentle Snow's and Xiao Yuru's outstanding lethal weapons. They were on entirely different levels. However, Stabbing Heart did not try to ruin Mu Qing's beautiful fantasy. At this moment, Karu's HP had decreased to 50%. Suddenly, Karu let out an angry bellow. Everyone, get away from the boss. Shi Feng knew that Karu was about to use Blade Storm. With Shi Feng's reminder, the elites of the Assassin's Alliance quickly distanced themselves more than 20 yards from Karu. Shortly after, Karu started spinning, transforming into a tornado that engulfed everything around it. Even after Karu's Blade Storm ended, nobody from the team had died. At worst, there were some players who had their HP damaged to a critical point. However, they were healed back to full HP by the healers very quickly. Following which, the team proceeded to decrease Karur's HP to 40%. Karur then started using his Avatar Slash. Although Karur only used Avatar Slash once every 20 seconds, there were bound to be some players who were extremely unlucky, chosen as targets for 7 or 8 consecutive times. For these unlucky players, surviving would be difficult regardless of how they held on. As one team member after another fell, Karur's HP also decreased to 10%. Karur went berserk. His speed and attack power soared by 30%, and he now had a critical hit effect. White Feather, unfortunately, received a critical hit. Even with Protection Blessing activated, he instantly lost over 1,400 HP. Moreover, when White Feather received this hit, he only had around 60% of his total HP remaining. Hence, he instantly died. White Feather's death greatly increased the pressure on Water Lake. To make things worse, there were only 12 players left alive in the team, while Karur still had 4% of his HP remaining, almost 20,000 HP. Helpless, Shi Feng could only choose to use one of his trump cards, the Flame Burst. During the short two-second cast time, Karur had used Avatar Slash once more, instant killing three more players. One of the three players killed was even a healer. This was truly a desperate situation. Meanwhile, Karur still had 3% of his HP, which meant that he had around 13,000 HP remaining. At this moment, the Abyssal Blade in Shi Feng's hand started glowing a dazzling white. The white glow surrounding the Abyssal Blade shone like a miniature sun, its presence alone raised the surrounding temperature by several folds. Shi Feng activated Wind Blade and arrived behind Karu. Lightly jumping up, Shi Feng brandished the Abyssal Blade at Karu's back, instantly forming six sword images. The six sword images resembling the sun instantly devoured Karu, causing frightening damages of minus 2153, minus 2203, minus 2178, minus 4356, minus 2206, minus 4422 to appear above Karu's head. Under this tremendous might, Karu's four meter tall body shot like a cannonball towards a steel wall. Underscore boom, underscore. 
an indentation in the shape of Kuru immediately formed on the steel wall. Meanwhile, Kuru was thoroughly charred black, as void of life as a stone. Chapter 213, Dark Warlock Salu Kuru is down. We won. What was that skill? How could it be so frightening? The surviving members looked at the charred Kuru, all involuntarily gulping a mouthful of saliva. The scene she Feng displayed before was simply unheard of. It was as if the thing he brandished was not a sword but a miniature sun. Even when standing at a distance of over 30 yards, they could feel the scorching temperature through the pain and burning of their skin. Meanwhile, the damage Shi Feng had dealt was even more shocking. Of his six last strikes, not one had dealt lower than minus 2,000 damage to the high chieftain-ranked boss. Among them, there were even two that achieved a critical hit, causing over minus 4,000 damage. It was the first time they had seen such a powerful skill. Stabbing Heart Jaw also hung open. Although he knew that Shi Feng was amazing, he never imagined that he would be this amazing. Cruel Sword was also awestruck. Originally, he had prepared for another failure. He never thought that Shi Feng would have a move like this hidden. Shi Feng had sent a level 12 high chieftain boss flying and instantly caused more than minus 10,000 damage. This was definitely the highest damage Cruel Sword had seen so far. At this moment, Cruel Sword's gaze grew even more fervent when he looked at Shi Feng. He couldn't help but wish that he could drag Shi Feng into the Assassin's Alliance right this instant. Mu Qing reacted quickly. This moment was her best chance to get closer to Shi Feng. Hence, Mu Qing immediately walked up to Shi Feng's side, acting excited as she pulled on Shi Feng's arm. Big brother Ya Feng, this move of yours is just too amazing. Just what sort of skill is it? This is my first time seeing such a skill. Mu Qing eyed Shi Feng as she spoke in a soft and supple tone, her slender eyelashes constantly fluttering. Admiration filled her gaze, and her expression was fragile, invoking any man's protective instincts. Flame Burst. It's a universal special skill that any class can use. Shi Feng could clearly feel a sense of warmth and softness on the arm she clung to. However, he did not put much thought into it. He deemed that Mu Qing had only done such a thing due to her excitement. Hence, he casually gave her the answer. A special skill, is it? How unfortunate. Originally, I thought of inviting Brother Ya Feng to help me grind for one. Mu Qing's excitement withered when she heard Shi Feng's words. One could only come across something like a special skill serendipitously, it was not something that one could obtain through effort. Indeed, how could such a powerful skill be so easily obtained? Let's take a look at the drops, then, Shi Feng said with a laugh, looking at Mu Qing's disappointed expression. Reminded by Shi Feng, everyone finally recalled the fact that Karur, who had just died, was a high chieftain ranked boss. The loot he dropped would doubtlessly be bountiful. They had forgotten this fact due to their shock at Shi Feng's strength. Following which, the surviving healers started reviving their fallen allies. Only when everyone was revived did Cruel Sword begin to collect the loot. Karur had dropped a total of five pieces of equipment, and all of them were mysterious iron rank. Compared to the boss of a ten-man dungeon, Karur had dropped an extra two to three pieces of equipment. Among the five pieces of equipment, there was a level 10 great shield, a level 10 longbow for rangers, a level 10 breastplate for berserkers, a level 10 staff for healers, and the last piece was a level 10 breastplate for swordsmen. The breastplates for berserkers and swordsmen in particular were pieces of said equipment. As for money, everyone in the team received 32 coppers. In general, it was a great harvest. As Shi Feng previously had an agreement with the Assassin's Alliance, the Wind Extinguisher Breastplate was given to him directly. Wind Extinguisher Breastplate, Chest Piece, Plate Armor, Mysterious Iron Rank. Level 10. Defense plus 83. Strength plus 7, Agility plus 10, Endurance plus 6. Restricted to Swordsman. Part of Wind Extinguisher Set Equipment, 1 6th. 2 Piece Effect, Increase Damage by 10%. 4-piece effect, increase attack speed and movement speed by 15%. 6-piece effect, ignore levels plus 3. When attacking, 15% chance to increase attack power by 50 points for 20 seconds. Regarding attributes or set effects, the Wind Extinguisher set equipment definitely possessed a qualitative increase compared to the Silvermoon set equipment. Shi Feng's best available option was to gather this whole set now and upgrade his equipment. However, it would not be an easy task. After receiving the Wind Extinguisher Breastplate, Shi Feng was in no hurry to swap it out with his current breastplate. After all, once he made the change, he would lose one of the set effects of the Silvermoon set equipment. He only intended to make the change after he collected four pieces of the Wind Extinguisher set equipment. After distributing the equipment, everyone advanced towards the next boss. Now that Water Lake possessed a level 10 Mysterious Iron Ranked Shield, his defense and HP had both increased significantly. As a result, they easily dealt with the monsters they met on their journey. Within 10 minutes, they arrived at a fighting arena. In the middle of the arena, Morlock, a Beastman assassin, stood there. He was also the second boss of the Beastman Munition Factory. Morlock, High Chieftain Rank. Level 12. 
HP 400,000 slash 400,000. Although Morlock's HP was lower than Karur's, Morlock was, in reality, much harder to deal with than Karur. Unlike Karur, Morlock was an assassin. During battle, Morlock would unpredictably disappear and reappear at another location. He would also frequently attack players while ignoring aggro, choosing to attack players on the run line rather than those on the front line. More importantly, Morlock had three skills that rendered players speechless. The first skill he possessed was Armor Break. Every one of Morlock's attacks would inflict a stackable Armor Break effect. To any plate armor classes, this could be a fatal skill, as once the armor break effect reached 10 stacks, their defense would essentially reduce to zero. Even if it were an MT that possessed over 2000 HP, Morlock could still kill them with just 2 to 3 hits. Before the healers could replenish the MT's lost HP, the MT would have already succumbed to Morlock's stunning attack speed, dying helplessly. The only fortunate aspect for players was that the armor break effect only had a short duration of 30 seconds. Players raiding Morlock only needed to swap out their MTS when the effect stacked up to 5 times. Morlock's second skill was Killing Feast. When activated, Morlock would attack all enemies within an 8-yard radius a total of 16 times. Throughout the duration of this skill, Morlock would enter a state of invulnerability. Moreover, Morlock would carry out these 16 attacks very quickly, he would finish all 16 attacks in just 2 seconds. If, when Morlock activated this skill, there were only the 2 MTS within range, these 2 MTS would die with a 100% guarantee. Thus, players needed to share the burden of this attack. This would also place an extreme pressure onto the healers. Morlock's third skill was called Vanish. When activated, Morlock would randomly ambush a player. If the ambushed player were a cloth armor class, then, without question, that player would die. Only players that belonged to a plate armor class would have any hopes of surviving Morlock's ambush. At this moment, everyone in the team looked towards Shi Feng, intending to obtain his opinion on how to deal with the second high chieftain boss. Contrary to their expectations, Shi Feng did not tell them any strategies to raid the boss. Instead, he instructed one healer and two MTS to test the waters. Otherwise, he might have to explain how he obtained his strategy. After making a few tests, Shi Feng started explaining his strategy for the initial stages of the boss fight. In reality, the plan was very simple. All plate armor classes would become tanks during the early stages of the raid, taking turns tanking Morlock. After all, Morlock's damage was not particularly high. It would only become powerful after the armor break effect stacked so many times. So, as long as one belonged to a plate armor class, they could withstand Morlock's damage. Naturally, it was the same when dealing with Morlock's killing feast. In short, players only needed to surround and beat up this boss. After 8 minutes passed, Morlock, the second boss of the Beastman Munition Factory, fell. The main reason for Morlock's fall was because Shi Feng was simply too strong. Shi Feng had practically tanked Morlock by himself. Shi Feng was extremely nimble when dodging Morlock's attacks, and Morlock could very rarely land an attack on him. This, in turn, resulted in a decrease to Shi Feng's damage output. With a stable tanker like Shi Feng, the healers enjoyed a rather easy time throughout this raid. They could spread their attention towards other members of the team, allowing everyone to have an easier time dealing with the boss. Problems only arose when Morlock used Vanish and appeared behind a cloth armor class. These unfortunate players could only curse their own bad luck as they accepted their deaths. Chapter 214, Dungeon Cleared After Morlock died, he dropped a total of four pieces of mysterious iron equipment. Everyone received a share of 34 copper coins and a large amount of EXP. Meanwhile, Shi Feng obtained a pair of Wind Extinguisher Leg Guards, increasing his collection of the Wind Extinguisher set equipment to two pieces. Everyone on the team looked at each other with a smile after they had killed Morlock, a high chieftain-ranked boss, with such ease. They all felt blissful from the fact that Shi Feng had joined their team. Right now, no one on the team felt the same panic they had when they first entered the dungeon. They could joke around with each other and had even become pals with Shi Feng. Occasionally, they would even ask Shi Feng to teach them a few battle techniques. While Shi Feng gave out casual pointers, the team members' admiration for Shi Feng gradually grew. Under Shi Feng's casual guidance, many players in the team exhibited noticeable improvement. Soon after, everyone arrived at the final throne room. Here, they met the final boss, the Dark Warlock Salu. Dark Warlock Salu, High Chieftain Rank. Level 12. HP 500,000 slash 500,000. Elsewhere, while Shi Feng and the others had arrived before the final boss, Dark Star's lone tyrant still tangled with the first boss of the Beastman Munition Factory, Karur. As of this moment, lone tyrant and his team had already experienced three team wipes. Moreover, Karur's avatar slash had caused all three. They had not improved one little bit since their first battle. Lone tyrant grew hysterical at this situation. He did not know why a 20-man dungeon would have such a huge increase in difficulty compared to a 10-man dungeon. After pondering for a long time, lone tyrant discovered the reason for their failures. This boss needs to be dealt with as quickly as possible. However, our overall damage simply isn't enough to finish him. Unless the team's equipment is further upgraded, the possibility of clearing this dungeon doesn't exist. 
Do we really have to go and upgrade our equipment before trying again? Lone Tyrant wore a hesitant expression as he glared at Karu. Due to his previous boasting, he was now stuck between a rock and a hard place. However, Lone Tyrant suddenly came to a realization. If the damage of his own team were insufficient to deal with Karur, then the Assassin's Alliance, who had poorer quality equipment, would have even less of a chance of killing Karur. At this moment, the team from the Assassin's Alliance must certainly be stuck at the first boss as well. When Lone Tyrant thought about this, his mood immediately lifted. He decided to reflect on their raiding strategy, giving the boss another try. Meanwhile, in the magnificent throne room of the Beastman Munition Factory, the Assassin's Alliance had already investigated the Dark Warlock Salu's skills. Aside from Dark Arrow being Salu's most basic attack, Salu was immune to all controlling effects. Salu also possessed two killing moves. One of them was a skill called Shadow Wound. When cast, the boss would fire 12 Dark Arrows. Each Dark Arrow would cause minus 800 damage and inflict a fear effect that lasted 6 seconds. The other was a skill called Summon Flame Giant. The Flame Giant was a level 12 special elite with 50,000 HP. Each Flame Giant that Salu summoned possessed self-immolation effect that dealt minus 300 flame damage to all targets within a 10-yard range every second. The Flame Giant was also the largest hurdle to overcome when raiding the Dark Warlock Salu, as the self-immolation was an AoE.1. If any players other than MTS received minus 300 flame damage every second, they would last 4 to 5 seconds at most. Meanwhile, Salu would summon an additional Flame Giant every 1 to 2 minutes. Factoring in the fear effect from Shadow Wound, many players in the team would die under the combination of these two skills. Even if this combination did not immediately kill them, with three flame giants running about, they would similarly end in destruction. Three flame giants would mean minus 900 total damage per second. Even Chi Feng could not last three seconds under this damage, much less the other players in the team. However, if they focused their attacks on the flame giants summoned instead, they would waste precious time. As a result, Salu would fully recover his HP due to his battle recovery. A battle of attrition like this would only end with the healers exhausting their mana and a team wipe. Meanwhile, after sending a group of half a dozen players to test the waters, everyone learned Dark Warlock Salu's true strength. As a result, their hearts sunk, and their confidence wavered. Ignoring the fact that each of Salu's Dark Arrows could cause minus 800 damage to their MTS and minus 1000 damage to everyone else, the Flame Giants alone were extremely difficult to deal with. After all, none of the melee players could go near a Flame Giant, and even if only the MTS tanked it, the healers still wouldn't be able to cope with the high damage. Not to mention, there was also Salu's AoE skill, Shadow Wound, that would suddenly cause minus 800 damage. The Flame Giant itself could cause over minus 300 damage to the MT with its attacks. Coupling that with the Flame Giant's self-immolation effect, its prowess could rival that of a boss. If they suddenly received an attack from Salu's Shadow Wound in addition to the Flame Giant's attacks, even their MTS might instantly die. Moreover, if they did not kill the first Flame Giant within 1-2 to two minutes of its summoning, Salu would summon the second Flame Giant. Under the simultaneous attacks of two Flame Giants, their MTS wouldn't have a chance. With their current equipment and levels, it was impossible for them to face Dark Warlock Salu head-on in battle. Thinking up to this point, everyone's moods grew somber. Isn't this only hard mode? Why is the difficulty so high? What would happen if this were hell mode? Stabbing Heart was similarly bitter after seeing Dark Warlock Salu's capabilities. The guild leader of the Assassin's Alliance, Cruel Sword, wrinkled his brows, falling into deep thought. Salu's rating difficulty was clearly much higher than the previous two bosses. As expected of a final boss, it won't be easy to clear this hurdle. At the very least, Cruel Sword did not have any good methods to raid Salu. While everyone was discouraged. Why don't we give it a try first? It's not like we're completely helpless right now, Shi Feng suddenly said in the team chat. Shi Feng's words were like a ray of hope. Brother Ye Feng, can we really raid this boss? Mu Qing blinked her mesmerizing eyes, her delicate body sticking close to Shi Feng as she asked. It should be possible. We can only find out if we try it, right? Shi Feng merely shrugged as he spoke, his calm appearance giving Mu Qing a slight surprise. Following which, Shi Feng gave a brief overview of his raiding plan. Shi Feng's plan was simple. He, alone, would kite the summoned flame giants, while the other members of the team would focus their attacks on the boss. In this situation, three of the four healers on the team would be responsible for healing the MTS, while the last healer would be responsible for keeping Shi Feng alive. However, this plan was very risky. Its success relied heavily on Shi Feng's ability to kite the flame giants. As the throne room did not provide a wide area for movement, Shi Feng needed to be mindful of his positioning. Any mistakes could lead to a team wipe. However, nobody rejected Shi Feng's proposal. They did not even have the slightest opinion about Shi Feng's plan. They had long since been convinced of Shi Feng's strength. Since Shi Feng shared his plan, he must be very confident about it. Thus, they believed that Shi Feng could really pull it off. Water Lake, you'll activate Darkness Aura. White Feather, you'll activate Crusader Aura. Let's start the raid, then, Shi Feng said. A Guardian Knight's Darkness Aura could provide an additional 5 points dark resistance to allies, decreasing the darkness damage they received. 
Meanwhile, the Crusader aura could increase allies' movement speed by 10%, letting everyone have an easier time evading the flame giants. With these two auras, the team would have a much easier time raiding the boss. Water Lake was the first to dash at Salu. While Salu was still in the process of casting a spell, Water Lake smashed Shield of Vengeance into Salu's face, causing minus 181 damage. Water Lake then followed up with Righteous Punishment, dealing minus 201 damage. However, neither of these attacks had interrupted or delayed Salu's chanting, and shortly after, a streak of dark light skewered Water Lake through the chest, causing minus 800 damage to him. A moment later, three healing lights landed on Water Lake's body, recovering over 700 HP of his HP. After Water Lake solidified his grasp on Salu's aggro, Shi Feng instructed the other players to initiate their attacks. After a moment, Salu pointed his staff towards the sky. A large, azure green fireball descended from the sky, crashing into the throne room. Immediately, Shi Feng tossed out the blazing meteor at the azure green flame giant, causing minus 621 damage and instantly becoming its main target. Seeing the flame giant charging at him, Shi Feng spun around and fled, luring the flame giant away from the rest of the team. He then started circling around the hall with the flame giant right behind him. As Salu's HP continued decreasing, the flame giants he summoned also grew stronger. Unfortunately, Shi Feng lured away all of the flame giants Salu summoned, spoiling his fun. After more than 10 minutes, Salu released a resentful bellow. His body fell to the throne as he passed away. TL Notes 1. Dot, damage over time Chapter 215, Basic Fire Resistance Potion From beginning to end, Shi Feng had lured a total of 9 flame giants, kiting them around the throne room. Due to his actions, the flame giants had not been able to showcase their prowess even once in this entire battle. As a result, the Dark Warlock Salu became very easy to deal with, breathing his last under everyone's heavy bombardment. Even an amazing boss could not compete against a reincarnated player. Their only fate was to be a plaything, unto death. Seeing Salu fall, everyone jumped in celebration. The Beast Munition Factory belonged to the category of Expedition Dungeons. Unlike the Dark Moon Graveyard, which was a survival dungeon, players only needed to kill the final boss in an Expedition Dungeon to clear it, there was no need to leave the dungeon for the clear to be official. At this moment, the White River City Region System Announcement had already appeared. White River City Region System Announcement, congratulations to Assassin's Alliance for becoming the first team to conquer the Hard Mode Beastman Munition Factory. All players within the team will be rewarded with 50,000 EXP and 1 Silver Coin. White River City Region System Announcement, congratulations to Assassin's Alliance for becoming the fastest team to conquer the Hard Mode Beastman Munition Factory. All players within the team will be rewarded with 50,000 EXP and 1 Tier 1 Gemstone of Random Attribute. As it was not the first clear of Hell Mode, the main god system would not be so generous as to reward them with reputation points. Normally, players would only receive EXP for obtaining the first clear of Hard Mode. Also, the race for Team Dungeons was categorized into two types, Hard Mode and Hell Mode. Normal Mode was not taken into consideration as no time challenge existed. Normally, the main god system would implement a clear time for Team Dungeons. The clear time set by the system depended on the type of Team Dungeon and its difficulty. Meanwhile, the Hard Mode Beastman Munition Factory's clear time was set at 3 hours. The main god system would usually set the clear time at a very high bar. Only if players had achieved the standard of an elite team, determined by the main god system, would they have a chance to clear the dungeon in this set amount of time. Meanwhile, under Shi Feng's command, the Assassin's Alliance had only spent 2 hours and 22 minutes to clear the Hard Mode Beastman Munition Factory, surpassing the estimated time. This proved that the team's strength was already above the standards of a normal elite team. However, everyone on the team knew full well that this achievement was all due to Shi Feng's contributions. After a round of mad celebration, everyone finally welcomed the most exciting moment. They began examining the item drops of the Dark Warlock Salu, the final boss monster of the Beastman Munition Factory. Compared to the previous two bosses, the loot from Salu was far more bountiful. Salu had dropped a total of seven items. Among them, five were level 10 mysterious iron ranked helmets, each being a part of a set equipment for different classes. With great luck, Salu even dropped a basic fire resistance potion recipe. As for the final item, it was a secret silver staff meant for elementalists. Elemental Scepter, Staff, Secret Silver Rank Level 10 Intelligence plus 15, Strength plus 4, Agility plus 4, Endurance plus 10 Increases elemental damage by 5% Increases casting speed by 10% Durability 80 80ths With just a glance, one could immediately tell that this was a top tier staff meant for elementalists. When the mages and the team looked at the details of this staff, drool nearly leaked from their mouths. Although these mages had quite a few pieces of mysterious iron equipment on their persons, their weapons and equipment were all below level 10. They were clearly much weaker compared to level 10 weapons and equipment, not to mention a secret silver ranked staff. Cruel Sword immediately handed the elemental staff to Mu Ching. 
However, nobody in the team expressed any dissatisfaction about Cruel Sword's decision because Mu Ching's strength was indeed very powerful. Moreover, her damage was ranked number one amongst all the mages present. Following which, Cruel Sword handed the Wind Extinguisher Helmet, Wind Extinguisher Arm Guard, and Basic Fire Resistance Potion Recipe to Shi Fang. Similarly, nobody in the team had any gripes about this decision. If it weren't for Shi Fang, they would not have cleared this dungeon in the first place. With this, Shi Fang now had four pieces of the Wind Extinguisher set equipment. Although he did not possess all six pieces, they were sufficient for him to replace the bronze ranked Silver Moon set equipment. Brother Ye Feng, you've helped us out so much, yet, you're only taking so few items. I am truly embarrassed about this, so please let me pay you another 100,000 credits as compensation. Otherwise, if the other guilds discover this matter, they will definitely make mock us for being insincere. Cruel Sword said with a laugh as he looked at Shi Feng. Putting aside the advertising benefits brought about from obtaining the first clear of the hard mode beast munition factory, just the equipment they obtained was already of considerable value. It was especially true for the secret silver ranked elemental scepter. The value of this staff alone could compare to half a dozen pieces of level 10 mysterious iron equipment. Hence, spending an additional 100,000 credits to compensate Shi Fang was a minor matter. To put it another way, the Assassin's Alliance had made a huge profit from this deal. After all, the first clear of a 20-man hard mode team dungeon held extraordinary significance, as up until this moment, any guild had yet to obtain the first clear of a 20-man hard mode team dungeon. Obtaining the first clear of the hard mode beast munition factory had undeniably allowed the Assassin's Alliance to break free from their awkward position in White River City. They no longer had to suffer the suppression from Dark Star. Of course, by giving Shi Feng 100,000 credits, Cruel Sword also had the intention of deepening the relationship between Shi Feng and the Assassin's Alliance. Cruel Sword still wished to recruit Shi Feng into the guild. Shi Feng could easily see through Cruel Sword's intentions. However, he merely smiled in reply, receiving all that Cruel Sword offered without hesitation. Cruel Sword had no idea that Shi Feng did not really care about this equipment. Even if it were the Wind Extinguisher set equipment, it was simply a temporary set of equipment for Shi Feng. Meanwhile, amongst these items, the one Shi Feng paid the most attention to was the Basic Fire Resistance Potion recipe. Basic Fire Resistance Potion After consumption, increases fire resistance by 15 points for one hour. Currently, this item had no market value. However, when the various large guilds started raiding the level 25 flame nest, the value of this basic fire resistance potion recipe would soar beyond one's imagination. Its worth would not be less than a piece of fine gold equipment. Players were not allowed to use the flaming sun scripture when in a dungeon. Meanwhile, equipment that increased a player's fire resistance was extremely rare. The quickest way to increase one's fire resistance was through the use of a basic fire resistance potion. If players did not possess this potion, raiding the flame nest would only be possible in their dreams. If Shi Feng started looking for a potion maker to craft the basic fire resistance potion now, he would carve out an additional path to wealth for the future. Even 10 pieces of secret silver equipment could not rival what he could earn with these potions. Brother Ye Feng, are you free tomorrow? At this moment, Mu Ching walked over to Shi Feng after receiving a silent hint from Cruel Sword. Sweetly, she said, my party is planning to raid the Old Ruins, a high level 10 man team dungeon, tomorrow. However, one of the original party members had applied for leave due to some personal matters. I'd really love it if you would join me. Will you? After a team dungeon was cleared, it would have a cooldown period of three days. Hence, they needed to wait for three days before they could enter the Beastman Munition Factory again. Standing to the side, Cruel Sword inwardly clapped his hands at Mu Cheng's performance. Relationships needed care and gentle nurturing. Although he could tell that Shi Feng had no particular interest in Mu Cheng, with increased interactions, who was to say would happen in the future? I still have something that I need to do tomorrow. Let's find some other time to go dungeon diving. Shi Feng could naturally tell what Mu Cheng was trying to do. However, he simply waved his hand and tactfully rejected her. Although the old ruins was a high-level team dungeon, there was nothing there that could rouse his interests. He would only waste time by going there. Now that he had changed into the four pieces of wind extinguisher set equipment, his attributes had greatly increased once again. He should be able to attempt the continuation of the epic quest, Darkness Descends, now. Mu Cheng's innocent eyes flashed with a hint of disappointment. She did not think that her charm, which had only brought her success so far, would fail against Shi Feng. Was she really lacking in charm, or were Shi Feng's defenses just too high? Chapter 216, Surpassing Imagination Beastman Munition Factory Boss, we've already team wiped four times now and have lost 20% of our experience. If we are to continue to die, at this rate, we might not even be a high enough level to enter the dungeon's entrance. Why don't we give up? All right, then. Everyone, get some rest. Afterwards, we'll head to a 10-man dungeon to upgrade our equipment. Lone Tyrant currently wore a gloomy expression on his face. They had tried all sorts of methods to raid the High Chieftain ranked boss, Karur, yet, ultimately, they still failed due to a lack of damage. Before, he had even made a solemn vow to kill Karur. Now that he thought about it, he felt that his decision had been slightly rash. 
Fortunately, the players from the Assassin's Alliance had absolutely no chances of clearing the dungeon. Otherwise, he would be utterly humiliated. Just as the members of Dark Star were resting. Suddenly, two system notifications relating to the Assassin's Alliance rang out beside everyone's ears. In the beginning, the members of Dark Star thought that they had heard wrong. Hence, they quickly called up the announcement interface. The extraordinarily large and clear words proved them wrong. The Assassin's Alliance had indeed obtained the first clear of the hard mode Beastman Munition Factory. Immediately, the atmosphere surrounding the members of Dark Star sunk. Why was there such a large difference between their two teams? Weren't they supposed to be stronger than the Assassin's Alliance? How could the Assassin's Alliance have already obtained the first clear, while they were still stuck at the first boss? Lone Tyrant felt like he had just been given two tight slaps to his face when he looked at these notifications, his cheeks felt as if they were on fire. He felt even worse when he recalled Shi Feng's words from before. If the nobodies that you've looked down on suddenly obtain the first clear of the hard mode beast munition factory a step ahead of you, then what would you all amount to? At this moment, those words were like sharp swords, continuously slashing at Lone Tyrant's pride. Lone Tyrant truly never imagined that such a situation would occur. However, Lone Tyrant was no fool. He did not believe the Assassin's Alliance had relied on only themselves to clear the dungeon. The only possible way they could do so was with the Shifeng's help. Just where did this mysterious person come from? In reality, Dark Star wasn't the only one to have been shocked by this piece of news. When the announcement spread throughout the entire White River City region, it had grabbed the attention of many other guilds. The Assassin's Alliance's position in White River City was self-evident from the fact that their development speed had surpassed even that of a first-rate guild. However, Dark Star's fame had recently suppressed Assassin's Alliance, adding to the fact that they had not produced any significant results from the team dungeons, their status in White River City had become slightly awkward. Now that they had obtained the first clear of the Beastman Munition Factory, their fame instantly soared. This allowed the Assassin's Alliance to regain their rightful reputation. From now on, their development speed would definitely be faster than before. White River City's Adventurers Association Brother John. Brother John. The Assassin's Alliance has obtained the first clear of the hard mode Beastman Munition Factory. Ling Filong suddenly rushed into Shadow's Guild Hall, announcing the news with a face filled with excitement. In God's domain, as long as guilds registered themselves at the Adventurers Association, they would be provided a free lounge for their own personal use in the various large cities. Guilds could carry out meetings and rest in this room, and they could also receive quests from the Adventurers Association. Why are you shouting? Who doesn't know of this matter? Zhou Yahu, who was resting in the corner of the room, rolled his eyes at Ling Filong. Of course, I know of this. However, there is another hidden truth to this matter. Ling Filong shot a glance at Zhou Yahu, before shifting his gaze towards the person sitting in the guild leader's seat, Zhang Luo Yi. A hidden truth. Speak. Ling Filong's words caused Zhang Luo Yi, who had previously been indifferent towards this matter, to grow interested. Ling Filong's previous report about his efforts to recruit Ye Feng had nearly caused Zhang Luo Yi to lash out in anger. Shi Feng had actually demanded to become the guild leader of Shadow. Did Ye Feng even place him in his eyes? Moreover, he had asked for 60% of the guild's shares. What did he take them for? Did he really think they were fools? Meanwhile, the most shocking thing was that Ling Filong had actually suggested that Zhang Luo Yi accept Shi Feng's conditions. Hence, Zhang Luo Yi now looked down on Ling Filong, resulting in Ling Filong receiving cold treatment within the guild. Brother Zhang, look at the Assassin's Alliance's first clear name list. Ye Feng is among the names. Ling Filong called out his system interface, pointing at the Assassin's Alliance's first clear name list as he spoke excitedly. So. Zhou Yahu laughed disdainfully. If they really allowed Ye Feng to join Shadow, he would no longer need to remain in the guild. The Assassin's Alliance is a through and through second rate guild. They were clearly on an expedition to clear the Beastman Munition Factory, yet, why would they suddenly let an outsider join their team? Previously, for a long time, the Assassin's Alliance could not even obtain a single first clear of a level 10 team dungeon. However, they are now the first ones to obtain the first clear of a 20-man hard mode team dungeon. Why is that? This matter definitely has something to do with Ye Feng. Ye Feng's relationship with the Assassin's Alliance is anything but shallow. Originally, the Assassin's Alliance was only a normal second-rate guild. However, after entering White River City, their development speed suddenly soared like crazy. They have even surpassed many first-rate guilds. Again, why? Ye Feng was the first person to enter White River City, and the White River City guidebook is also selling like hotcakes now. There is a very high likelihood that Ye Feng sold the guidebook to the Assassin's Alliance in advance, allowing them to make ample preparations beforehand. Hence, after they entered White River City, they developed with flying speeds. Right now, Ye Feng has even helped the Assassin's Alliance obtain a first clear. 
Regarding fame or background, the Assassin's Alliance now stands at the very top of White River City. They have even surpassed many first-rate guilds. This is a clear proof of Yefeng's capabilities. If Yefeng joins Shadow, within a month, we can stand our own ground in White River City. Ling Fi Long had made a thorough investigation of Yefeng, and the more information he uncovered about Yefeng, the more frightened he became. Yefeng's accomplishments far surpassed his imagination. This was also the reason Ling Fi Long became even more determined to hug a golden leg like Shifeng. At that time, what would Zhang Luo Yi amount to? What would Lan Hei Long amount to? Don't even think about it. In the future, if you ever dare to mention Yefeng's name to me again or tell Lan Hei Long about this matter, you better be prepared for the consequences. Zhang Luo Yi's countenance suddenly turned livid. With a tone filled with killing intent, he said, Yefeng is just a clown, jumping about on the stage. The Assassin's Alliance is an apex second-rate guild with an immense background. Their guild leader, Cruel Sword, is even a long-established expert. He has personally nurtured the Assassin's Alliance to its current status, so it is not unusual for him to produce such results. To begin with, what sort of impact could that Yefeng even have? In my opinion, that Yefeng would, at best, take on the role of a bystander. Being reprimanded by Zhang Luo Yi in such a way, Ling Fi Long immediately revealed a fearful expression. Hurriedly nodding his head, he said, Yes, I understand, Brother Zhang. I definitely won't mention this again in the future. Inwardly, however, Ling Fi Long smiled brightly. He was even more assured of Yefeng's might now. After all, if Zhang Luo Yi did not feel greatly threatened by Yefeng, why would he be so angry at the mention of this expert? In fact, Ling Fi Long had long since told Lan Hei Long about this matter, and Lan Hei Long had instructed him to contact Shi Feng secretly once more. Once he attained certain achievements in God's domain, would he still be afraid of not being able to earn money? With wealth, would he still need to be afraid that Zhao Ruoxi wouldn't welcome his embrace of her own volition? Her family might very well obediently hand her over to him. Just as everyone discussed the Assassin's Alliance's first clear, Shi Feng had already swapped out his old equipment for the four pieces of the wind extinguisher set equipment and had arrived at the library of White River City. Compared to the dilapidated house used as a library in Red Leaf Town, the library at White River City was a true library. Not only did it possess a majestic atmosphere, but its appearance was also splendid and magnificent. It was like a Babylonian shrine, and it was situated right in the heart of the city. The people going through the entrance of the library were mostly nobles of White River City and mage class NPCs. There were even some who possessed tier 2 classes. Hence, the library was not a place where the common folk could simply visit. Meanwhile, Charlin, the tier 3 divine official whom Shi Feng searched for, currently recuperated within this wealth of knowledge. Chapter 217, Thoughtful Rain At the entrance of White River City's majestic library. Aside from a large number of NPCs entering and leaving the premises, there were also plenty of players surrounding the library's entrance. However, no matter how hard they tried, they still could not enter the library. Hence, a majority of these players were currently trying to befriend some of the NPCs here, increasing their intimacy in the hopes of these NPCs taking them along into the library. There were even some attractive female players that tried to seduce the NPC nobles. Meanwhile, the players that attempted these actions were mostly mages such as elementalists, cursemancers, and summoners. As for why these players tried to get into the library, it was mainly because of the amazing skills they could learn within the library. Aside from obtaining these skills from monsters and dungeons, the library also possessed some of the more common, high-level mage skills. As for healers, they would have to visit the Light Temple to learn their respective skills. Meanwhile, all melee classes could learn new skills from their respective class instructors in the Apocalypse Temple. These players had read about the library in the White River City Guidebook by Shifeng. Hence, they had all come here to obtain new skills. After all, compared to upgrading their weapons and equipment, it was much easier to upgrade their arsenal of skills. As long as players could learn some of these high-level skills, their overall prowess would massively improve. However, learning a skill was very expensive. Players also needed to do a series of quests and waste precious time to obtain a skill. Hence, Shi Feng never thought of obtaining his skills through such means. After all, the skills he had learned so far were not any weaker than those high-level class-specific skills. So, he naturally would not waste time trying to obtain them. Seeing Shi Feng walking towards the library's entrance, the spectating players by the sidelines revealed sneers on their faces. Look, another new guy is trying to enter. How many players has that been already? Let's watch the guard kick him out. Most of these players had suffered a loss at the hands of the gatekeeper. As none of them possessed an entry pass, the guards had chased them all away. There were also some players who tried to cause a scene after being refused entry. However, these players were either jailed or sent flying away with a kick. Just as Shi Feng was about to walk towards the tightly shut large steel doors, a female elementalist pulled on Shi Feng, stopping him. The guards here will kick out any player without an entry pass. It is best if you do not try to approach them, the female player warned Shi Feng. Shi Feng already knew this. However, since the other party had approached him with kind intentions, Shi Feng turned his head and looked at the female player that had stopped him. 
Immediately, Shi Feng discovered that the female player who stopped him was very beautiful. Amongst all the female elementalists he knew, only the flame witch, Zhao Yuru, might trump this girl's beauty. Moreover, the equipment on this girl fully comprised of mysterious iron equipment. Although her weapons and equipment were all below level 10, they were still extremely valuable. As the girl before him was an independent player, it was much more difficult for her to obtain such equipment compared to a member of a guild. However, for some unknown reason, Shi Feng felt a sense of familiarity when he looked at this female player. Yet, he could not recall when he had met her before. He then used observing eyes and took a look at this girl's name. Thoughtful Rain Shi Feng had no recollection of this ID, and he was very sure that there was no female expert in his previous life with such a name. Since she was not a female expert, why did he feel a sense of familiarity with her? Shi Feng shook his head. There was no point thinking about it if he couldn't remember. It might just be a misconception due to his reincarnation. Thanks, Shi Feng said. Thoughtful Rain faintly smiled. She thought that, since Shi Feng had shown his appreciation, he must have a kind personality, unlike others who would reply to goodwill with malice. Hence, she pointed towards the group of players a short distance away that was currently surrounding a few NPC nobles, softly saying, N, your attitude isn't so bad after all. If you wish to enter the library, it is best if you obtain an entry pass first. You can also try to befriend one of those NPC nobles. They possess some entry passes. Miss Rain, are you trying to enter the library as well? Shi Feng asked. N, but those NPC nobles are simply too vile. So, I was just about to leave in search of an entry pass somewhere else. Thoughtful Rain nodded her head. However, when she recalled those fat and oily NPC nobles, an expression of disgust appeared on her face. Since that is the case, why don't you enter the library with me? Shi Feng asked. He had no ulterior motives in inviting her along. He was simply trying to repay Thoughtful Rain's kind reminder. Enter. Thoughtful Rain asked in confusion, do you have an entry pass? No. Shi Feng shook his head. He then smiled as he explained, however, I have other methods. It shouldn't be possible, right? The guards here will only allow those with an entry pass or those related to the library to enter. Thoughtful Rain revealed an unconvinced expression as if saying, you're tricking me. Shi Feng merely smiled at her reaction, not bothering to explain. He then walked towards the large metal doors. Before Thoughtful Rain could stop Shi Feng, the guard on duty had already noticed him. The spectating players in the distance all started snickering at the thought of the misfortunate about to befall on Shi Feng. This noob is trying too hard to impress the beauty he just met. I want to watch the guard put him in his place. With his figure, I'm guessing that the guard will send him flying over 10 yards. If he continues making a ruckus, the guard might even capture him and hang him by the library's entrance for display. That isn't right. The guard kicked that last berserker over 10 yards. I bet that he will fly 15 yards away. Just as everyone wore mocking smiles, the guard moved forward and blocked Shi Feng's path. Halt, the powerful and mighty guard at the entrance suddenly blocked Shi Feng with his spear. He then coldly said, you will need to present your pass if you wish to enter the library. I'm a demon hunter. Will that do? Shi Feng swapped out his might of a thousand title for the demon hunter title, asking. So, it is Lord Demon Hunter. Please pardon my rudeness. The gatekeeper immediately retracted his spear, showing Shi Feng extreme respect. This situation immediately stunned the spectating players standing at a side. Their mouths gaped as the scene left them speechless. Even after they tried countless methods to obtain an entry pass from the NPC nobles, they still failed. Yet, the noob before them had actually made the gatekeeper kneel before him in respect just by uttering a single sentence. Could this be the rumored secret signal? Or was it the entry password? Shi Feng nodded towards the guard. He then pointed at Thoughtful Rain, saying, She is a friend of mine. However, she does not possess an entry pass. I wonder if she can enter with me. I can be her guarantor. Of course. Since she is a friend of the Lord Demon Hunter, she is naturally allowed to enter. The guard took a look at Thoughtful Rain, immediately noticing that she was an exquisite beauty. He then returned his gaze to Shi Feng, an understanding look on his face as he hurriedly said, In addition, here is a library member's emblem. This will allow Lord Demon Hunter's friend to enter the library freely in the future. Saying so, the guard respectfully passed the library member's emblem to Shi Feng. Shi Feng was slightly stunned. God's domain had only undergone one evolution as of this moment. He never thought that these NPC guards would be so intelligent already. Though he felt slightly shocked, he had no hesitation when accepting the library member's emblem from the guard. An entry pass could only provide a single entry into the library for players. However, one could not complete the process of learning a new skill with a single trip. Meanwhile, there was no limit to the number of uses for the library member's emblem. Players could enter the library without any restrictions if they possessed this emblem. Originally, obtaining the library member's emblem for a friend was a special right reserved for nobles in White River City. Shi Feng did not think that even a demon hunter would have such rights. Miss Rain, please hold on to this library member's emblem properly. 
In the future, you simply need to wear it on your person, and none of these guards will bar you from the library, Shi Feng said, handing the emblem to Thoughtful Rain, who was currently still in a daze. Following which, the two of them entered the library under everyone's stunned gazes. Some of the players were immediately dumbfounded. A few female players also revealed their envy as they watched Thoughtful Rain. At this moment, the players who had previously mocked Shi Feng ran up to the library's entrance. Halt! The gatekeeper blocked all the players, coldly saying, You will need to present your pass if you wish to enter the library. I'm a demon hunter. Will that do? These players repeated Shi Feng's words, inwardly praising themselves for their clever minds. How brave! You actually dare to impersonate the Lord Demon Hunter. When the guard swept a glance over these players, he failed to discover any of them in possession of the Demon Hunter title. Immediately, the guard flared with anger. In the end, all these smart people ended up in tragedy. Chapter 218, Star Street Trading Firm After Shi Feng and Thoughtful Rain entered the library, Thoughtful Rain's eyes flashed with a hint of shock when she saw the spectacular scene inside the library. The interior of the library was like something from a fantasy world. Countless documents and materials were displayed all around the library, and a massive, transparent crystal globe occupied the center. This crystal globe was like a supercomputer, one could search for any information available pertaining to the Star Moon Kingdom. Meanwhile, numerous open-air meditation rooms made of magic crystals decorated the surroundings of the crystal globe. Inside these meditation rooms, players could either research new spells or practice using their current spells. Normally, only Tier 3 and above mage classes would research new spells. The players at this stage of the game had yet to possess a deep understanding of magic, so researching new spells was out of the question for them. Moreover, the spells that players currently used were only entry-level spells. However, along with the increase in their levels, the spells they used would also grow more complex. If they did not possess a specific degree of understanding of magic, they could stop dreaming of casting any high-tier spells. As a result, many mages in God's domain had given up on their adventuring career, switching to a lifestyle class instead. In fact, magic wasn't the only thing that had stringent requirements for players. It was the same for battle techniques. The more powerful a battle technique was, the higher its requirement would be of a player's control over their body. As a result, this requirement had created a gap in strength between the players of God's domain. It was one of the reasons that some players could advance to a tier 5 class, while some failed even to reach tier 3. Although it would be of some help if players increased their levels and attributes, such factors would make little difference the further players advanced in God's domain. This was also the reason why God tier powerhouses were so rare. Thus, Shi Feng continuously trained his body day in and day out, in addition to spending a large number of credits to purchase nutrient fluids to improve his body's physique. It was all meant to improve his brain's potential and performance. Only by developing his brain's potential could he master his body in the game and obtain extraordinary battle prowess. He could then advance to a tier 5 class and take the challenge to advance to the tier 6 godhood, reaching the pinnacle of God's domain. Let's part ways here, I still need to look for someone. If you want to learn high-level skills, the Tier 2 instructor over there can help you, Shi Feng pointed towards a mage in white robes standing by the large crystal globe. Thank you, Thoughtful Rain appeared slightly embarrassed as she expressed her gratitude. Originally, she had intended to help Shi Feng. Never would she have imagined that she would be the one who received help instead. She then said, seeing as you are so familiar with this place, are you perhaps a professional player? I guess you can put it that way, Shi Feng nodded. Let's add each other as friends, then. I don't normally play games, so I usually buy my game equipment from others. In the future, if I am looking to purchase equipment or do a quest, I can also look to you for some help. Thoughtful Rain beamed a smile as she sent Shi Feng a friend request. That's fine, but if you need help with a quest, it would be best if you contact me about it in advance, Shi Feng accepted the friend request. He did not think that, by coming here to do a quest, he would actually meet a potential female customer. When his workshop started its operations in the future, aside from raiding dungeons to obtain equipment, they would also need to look for tycoons and various corporations for sponsorship. However, it was extremely difficult for an upstart workshop to obtain sponsorship from a large corporation. Newly established workshops usually depended on rich players who were willing to spend large sums of money. Only after becoming a large guild would a workshop attract the sponsorship of large corporations. Although Shi Feng's workshop had yet to start its operation officially, there was already one customer waiting at the front door. His luck was relatively good. After Shi Feng left, Thoughtful Rain inspected Shi Feng's ID. Oh! He is Ye Feng, White River City's number one expert. As Shi Feng had kept his ID hidden, it was only revealed after Shi Feng accepted her friend request. Although Thoughtful Rain was not a gaming expert, having a poor understanding of the gaming world, Shi Feng's fame had long since shaken the White River City region. He had also received many titles such as White River City's number one independent player, God-ranked expert, and so on. Furthermore, Shi Feng had also personally penned the luxury version of the White River City guidebook she had bought. So, how could she not know who Shi Feng was? No wonder why I thought he looked familiar. It turns out that he is Ye Feng. This looks interesting. 
Thoughtful Rain's bright red lips slightly lifted upwards as she lost herself in her own thoughts. On the library's uppermost floor, Star Moon Hall. Several level 180 tier 1 knights stood guard outside of Star Moon Hall. These knights wore rigid expressions. Under normal circumstances, even normal nobles were not allowed into the Star Moon Hall. However, these knights did not stop Shi Feng this time. On the contrary, they immediately parted the crystal doors for Shi Feng upon his arrival. I've been bitterly waiting for you for so long, why have you only decided to come now? Charlene asked, smiling sweetly from her seat next to a shiny, stone table. The woman currently wore a set of pure white, magical robes. The delicate and luxurious robes radiated a faint silvery glow, making Charlene appear as though she were a flawless noble saint. She crossed one thigh over the other, revealing fair, supple skin. It was almost as if Charlene was trying to toy with Shi Feng. At this moment, Charlene was no longer a level 20 tier 3 divine official, but a level 180 tier 3 divine official. Aside from the few tier 4 tyrants, Charlene could very well be considered the most powerful person in White River City. Why are you standing there, daydreaming? Come over here and sit. We have plenty of time to have a lengthy chat. Charlene smiled faintly as she pointed towards the empty seat beside her. Shi Feng instinctively shuddered when he faced a gold digger like Charlene. He felt as if he were being stared at by a nine-tailed fox, his wallet no longer safe. However, to obtain the clue for the epic quest, Shi Feng had no choice but to advance, taking a seat beside Charlene. Shi Feng took out ten gold coins, placing them on the table. He then asked in a soft tone, esteemed Lady Charlene, I've brought the ten gold coins you requested. I wonder if you can tell me the location of the Bible of Darkness now. Charlene made a slight waving motion and the gold coins on the stone table immediately flew to her lily-white hand. Giggling, she played with the shiny coins in her hand. I didn't think that your money-making speed would be so fast. This big sister has truly underestimated you. After storing the gold coins, Charlene unhurriedly said, However, I now have a new piece of information. I wonder if you would be interested in hearing it. Moreover, this information is extremely accurate. It will definitely help you in locating the Bible of Darkness. Shi Feng's lips involuntarily twitched at Charlene's words. She was going to ask for more money. Say it. How much do you want? Shi Feng truly felt regretful now. Due to the successful sales of hard stones, Shi Feng now had over 70 gold coins on his person. If he had known something like this would happen, he would have stored all his money in the bank before coming to the library. However, there was also another possibility. Only when players possessed a certain amount of money could they trigger the revelation of new information. If so, without a doubt, Shi Feng had reached this goal. Not much, an additional 40 gold coins would be enough. Of course, you can choose not to listen to this new information. I'm not trying to belittle you, but with your current strength, it is impossible for you to locate the Bible of Darkness by relying on the old clue. Are you sure you don't want to know this new clue? Charlene blinked her eyes at Shi Feng, her body radiating a holy aura. Those affected by this aura would find it hard to refuse Charlene's request. A total of 50 gold coins. At this moment, Shi Feng wanted to shout, Why don't you just rob me and be done with it? However, Shi Feng endured it. As long as he could obtain the reward for the epic quest, spending 50 gold coins was nothing in comparison. Here is 40 gold coins. Shi Feng ground his teeth as he placed another 40 gold coins on the stone table, forming a small, gold mountain. Charlene's eyes shone as she saw the small mountain of gold. After snagging the gold coins, she unhurriedly took out a letter and handed it to Shi Feng. She then said, This is a contract for White River City Star Street Trading Firm. As long as you bring this contract to President Henry, he will tell you how to reach the Dark Denmark. Chapter 219, Background Star Street Trading Firm Shi Feng was slightly confused by Charlene's words. After all, this was the second phase of an epic quest. Yet, Charlene did not send him on a dangerous mission, but simply to find a person instead. The difficulty of this task was simply inconceivable. Could money really make the devil turn millstones for you? Can spending money reduce the difficulty of a quest? Shi Feng wondered. Giving the situation some thought, it wasn't exactly impossible. Right now, a first-rate guild's daily liquid funds only amounted to 6 to 7 gold coins at best. Even if Fantasy Extinguisher had the full support of the first-rate guild, the Fantasy Shrine, it would have been impossible for him to gather 50 gold coins. Even if the Fantasy Shrine possessed 50 gold coins, they would not simply allow Fantasy Extinguisher to spend it. After all, a large guild could make major improvements to itself with 50 gold coins. If Shi Feng had not received a daily income of over 100 gold coins from selling the hard stones, he would not pay 50 gold coins, even if it killed him. According to the main god system's principle of equal value exchange, there was a very high possibility that he could reduce the difficulty of the epic quest by paying 50 gold coins. In any case, Shi Feng did not lack money right now. After all, he had a daily income of over 100 gold. His earnings could rival the total sum of all the famous guild's liquid funds in White River City. It was not an exaggeration to say that his personal wealth could rival an entire city's. If he could reduce the difficulty of an epic quest by paying some money, he would definitely do so. 
If he had known about this earlier, he would have waited a few more days before coming to meet Charlin. If he gathered 500 or 600 gold coins, he might be able to go to the Dark Den immediately to complete the quest. He would save plenty of time and trouble. Thank you, Lady Charlin. Shi Feng respectfully received the contract. I have faith in you. Don't make me wait too long. As more time passes, the strength of the Great Demon will also increase. At that time, even I might not be able to challenge it. As for you, you'll just have to live the remainder of your life as a walking corpse, Charlin warned. System, second phase of the epic quest, Darkness Descends, Gospel Project, accepted. Quest content, go to Star Street Trading Firm and look for President Henry for more information about the Dark Denmark rewards unknown. Although Shi Feng did not know the exact contents of the quest, he felt that it should not be as easy as he had previously imagined. After all, he was only meeting Henry to learn more information and not heading directly to the Dark Den. Star Street Trading Firm was very famous throughout White River City. The range of operation of the Star Street Trading Firm was not limited to White River City alone. It also operated in the seven cities surrounding White River City. It was a massive trading firm. With such a wide reach, the amount of information they possessed would be immense as well. It was no wonder Charlin sent him to meet President Henry. Soon after, Shi Feng bade farewell to Charlin. If he remained here, the remaining 20 gold coins in his pockets might very well end up in Charlin's pockets instead. After leaving the library, Shi Feng hailed a horse carriage and hurried over to Star Street Trading Firm. As the horse carriage galloped through the wide streets, Shi Feng could see players who had just arrived at White River City all around. Through the passing of time, the atmosphere in White River City had grown livelier. There was a high possibility that, in just another few days, the streets of White River City would be packed with people. Ten minutes or so later, the horse carriage halted in front of the storefront of Star Street Trading Firm. The Star Street Trading Firm store appeared luxurious. The building had a total of six floors. This store was definitely one of the tallest buildings in White River City, making it extremely eye-catching. Moreover, it was situated in a very good location, right in the heart of the trade area. The Bank of White River City was also just next door, while the auction house was only a short distance away. There were only eight shops in total situated within this golden district. Among them, three shops occupied the largest areas, each occupied two to three times more land than the other shops. Naturally, Star Street Trading Firm was one of these shops. Moreover, Star Street Trading Firm similarly occupied such a golden district in the other seven cities. It was obvious just how powerful the background of Star Street Trading Firm was. During the initial stages of God's Domain, countless first-rate guilds had tried to form connections with the Star Street Trading Firm to conduct business. Unfortunately, these guilds failed to meet even the shadow of President Henry. Yet, right now, Shi Feng could get in touch with President Henry through his quest. Shi Feng couldn't help but admit that an epic quest was truly awe-inspiring. Although the price of failure was similarly horrifying, as long as he could complete it, the benefits he could obtain were unimaginable. The best example for this was the Demon Hunter title and Demon Mask Shi Feng had received from completing the first phase of the Darkness Descends quest. These two items had been of great help to him. I wonder what sort of rewards I could obtain from completing this phase of the quest. Shi Feng inwardly felt anticipation. As of this moment, Shi Feng had finally realized why the Fantasy Shrine would hold nothing back in helping Fantasy Extinguisher complete his epic quest. After all, the profits they could reap from this quest was just astonishing. If a mere independent player like him could receive such profits, what could a guild accomplish? Hence, this was the reason the Fantasy Shrine had risen to the top of Black Dragon Empire during the early periods of the game in the past, suppressing all the other first-rate guilds. Unfortunately, Fantasy Shrine was doomed to normality in this life. Unless Fantasy Extinguisher managed to find another epic quest, Fantasy Shrine would not have any chances of achieving prominence. However, such a discovery was extremely unlikely. In the past, Shi Feng had only accepted one epic quest throughout the decade he had spent in God's Domain. Moreover, he had only received it by chance when he was around level 150. One could imagine just how rare an epic quest was. At this moment, Shi Feng suddenly received a system announcement. White River City Region System Announcement, congratulations to Auroboros for becoming the first team to conquer the hard mode Crystal Ruins. All players within the team will be rewarded with 50,000 EXP and one silver coin. White River City Region System Announcement, congratulations to Auroboros for becoming the fastest team to conquer the hard mode Crystal Ruins. All players within the team will be rewarded with 50,000 EXP and one tier 1 gemstone of random attribute. This system announcement undeniably caused a sensation among the players in White River City. Right now, the independent players who had arrived in White River City all had impressive techniques. Meanwhile, a large majority of them were unwilling to join a small guild, they all wished to join a large, top-tier guild. However, these independent players would not determine a guild's strength solely through the fame of the guild. After all, every time a guild started out in a new virtual reality game, they had to start from the very bottom. Moreover, there would always be some nameless guild suddenly rising in the ranks, becoming the tyrant of this new virtual reality game. Similarly, there was also plenty of well-known guilds that had vanished without a trace. Hence, players would usually determine a guild's strength through their dungeon raiding capabilities. 
This situation also caused the system announcements to be extraordinarily important to guilds, as this was the basis of reference for independent players. In fact, the players who had previously intended to join the Assassin's Alliance had all changed their minds to join Auroboros instead. After all, not only was Auroboros a first-rate guild, but they had also obtained the first clear of a Hell Mode dungeon. Regarding wealth, influence, or strength, Auroboros was far more powerful than the Assassin's Alliance. Even an idiot knew which guild to choose. This was the difference in backgrounds. As expected of Gentle Snow, her speed is astonishing. I've only just recently helped the Assassin's Alliance obtain the first clear of a 20-man hard mode team dungeon, yet, in the blink of an eye, she too has obtained one already. If she had not suddenly stopped playing God's Domain, she might have turned Auroboros into a super guild in the past. Shi Feng inwardly exclaimed. How great would it be if he could recruit Gentle Snow into his own guild? If Shi Feng incorporated the Cleric God, Violet Cloud, the Tyrant Bear, Cola, the Skillful Fire Dance, and his own past experiences into his own guild, they would have no trouble becoming a first-rate guild, or even a super guild, in the future. Thinking up to this point, Shi Feng suddenly felt that he really needed to upgrade his team's strength. After all, a guild couldn't rely on a handful of Apex experts for support. They needed a stronger backbone. The best case scenario for Shi Feng right now was to recruit some of the future powerhouses who were still obscure existences right now. However, the guild he established by himself did not possess a deep background or great fame. These experts were no fools. If Shi Feng tried to recruit them, they might not even consider the option before rejecting him. Hence, the foremost thing Shi Feng needed to do was to establish a guild with a strong background and limitless potential. Only by doing so could he attract those nameless experts. Chapter 220, Tier 4 Magic Scroll First Floor Reception Hall of Star Street Trading Firm The Star Street Trading Firm store was different from normal stores. As it specialized in big businesses across cities, it had its own specialized reception room set up in the building. At the same time, there was also a sales area located on the first floor of the building. The sales area sold various merchandise such as clothing, weapons, equipment, potions, alchemy products, magic scrolls, and much more. This place was just like a supermarket in reality. A trading firm was different from the auction house. As the auction house charged players exorbitant processing fees, the items sold there were far more expensive than the items sold in normal stores. Earning money in God's domain was no simple task. Hence, rather selling their wares at the auction houses, losing 15% of their profits in the process, a large majority of the players in God's domain would prefer to spend more time selling their wares at trading companies or stores. Esteemed sir, how may I assist you? The beautiful and dignified young lady at the receptionist counter smiled at Chi Feng. I wish to meet President Henry. Please tell President Henry that Lady Charlin sent me to speak with him, Chi Feng said. Please wait for a moment. I will notify the President immediately. The receptionist immediately took out a multicolored communication crystal, transferring Shi Feng's information through the crystal. After several minutes, Mr. Ye Feng, the president is waiting for you in the president's office on the third floor. Thank you. Immediately, Shi Feng walked towards the spiral staircase in the distance. When he arrived before the president's office on the third floor, he met two level 150 guards who stood by the office's door. Average players were absolutely not allowed to enter the president's office. In the past, countless guild executives had queued up in front of this office. They had wished to meet with President Henry to discuss matters of renting out the first floor of Star Street Trading Firm's store for business. Unfortunately, they did not manage to catch even the shadow of President Henry. However, when Shi Feng walked up to the office, the two ferocious-looking guards immediately parted the sturdy, mahogany doors for him. Inside the luxurious and spacious office, a man in his fifties sat on a sofa in the middle of the room. The man had an elegant and dignified appearance. This person was indeed President Henry of Star Street Trading Firm, and he was a well-known financial magnate in White River City. Your Excellency, Ye Feng, please, sit, President Henry said when his eyes met Shi Feng's, his finger pointing to the beast skin sofa before him. President Henry, this is the contract that Miss Charlin wanted me to bring to you. Shi Feng sat down. He retrieved the contract from his bag, handing it over for Henry's inspection. No need. Before you arrived, Her Highness Charlin had already notified me of your coming here. I've also learned some information about you from Her Highness Charlin. The young truly are promising, Henry praised. He then said, since you are here now, I feel reassured. Reassured? What are you reassured about? Shi Feng had a bewildered look on his face. Just what was President Henry saying? Also, just what did Charlin tell Henry? Oh! Did Her Highness Charlin not tell Your Excellency about it? Confused, Henry said, this contract was set between me and Her Highness Charlin. As long as Her Highness can save the Star Street Trading Firm from its current predicament, she will obtain 20% of Star Street Trading Firm's shares and the Tier 4 Magic Scroll that was obtained from the Ancient Ruins. You say 20% of the company's shares and a Tier 4 Magic Scroll? Shi Feng's expression froze. Charlin was simply ruthless. Charlin had sent him to deal with the predicament, yet, she would receive a Tier 4 Magic Scroll in addition to 20% of the company's shares. That's right. 
I've already mentioned this to Her Highness. As long as Your Excellency can save us from this predicament, the Tier 4 magic scroll will belong to Your Excellency, Henry said, nodding his head. May I know what kind of magic scroll it is? Shi Feng was incredibly curious about the Tier 4 magic scroll. In the past, the most powerful magic scroll Shi Feng had seen was only a Tier 4. If he sold the scroll, the minimum price for it would be 500 gold coins. If it were an amazing Tier 4 magic scroll, he could even sell it for over 1,000 gold coins. However, players who obtained a Tier 4 magic scroll were not usually willing to sell it. It is a Tier 4 position teleportation scroll. With it, one can teleport to anywhere they wished within an instant. However, this scroll was made using the technology of an ancient civilization. In our current era, we have no way of replicating such technology. Hence, this scroll is the only one that currently exists in Star Moon Kingdom. It is priceless, Henry said pridefully. This scroll was his most precious treasure, he had always been reluctant to part with it. If it were not for the trading firm facing a great predicament, he would never willingly offer this tier 4 magic scroll as a remuneration. Hearing Henry saying so, Shi Feng came to a realization. If he had the tier 4 position teleportation scroll, he could teleport directly to the Dark Denmark. He would not even have to waste time searching for its exact location. It was no wonder Charlene was so confident in her information. President Henry, I wonder what sort of predicament your trading firm wishes me to solve? Shi Feng asked. To be honest, bandits have snatched one of our shipments carrying precious merchandise, costing the trading firm massively. To make up for the loss, our trading firm had to pay a large sum of money as compensation, which in turn, resulted in our trading firm facing its current crisis. So, I hope that your excellency can help us resolve this predicament. Otherwise, if this problem drags on for another month, our trading firm will have to declare bankruptcy, Henry unhurriedly explained. Then, President Henry, are you telling me to get rid of those bandits and retrieve your stolen merchandise? It would be best if that is possible. Then, which band of bandits stole your merchandise? The Black Scorpion Corps of Black Cloud Ridge, led by Black Scorpion himself. He is a level 180 tier 3 shadow warrior. If you can get rid of him and retrieve our merchandise, I would greatly appreciate it. Hearing the words, tier 3 shadow warrior, Shi Feng nearly fell off of his seat. Was President Henry telling him to deal with a tier 3 NPC? Only players who did not know how to write the word death would accept this request. Not to mention a month, Shi Feng would still fail this task even if he had two years to complete it. This had to be a joke. Shi Feng had originally thought that the epic quest's difficulty had been reduced. Rather, wasn't this the exact opposite? Noticing Shi Feng's troubled expression, Henry once more unhurriedly said, If your excellency feels that this request is too difficult, there is a second option. It is also for this reason that Her Highness Charlene sent your excellency here. Shi Feng slightly recovered from his shock as he heard that there was a second option. In reality, our trading firm also feels that it is impossible to retrieve the merchandise. The only possibility for Star Street Trading Firm to get through this predicament is for us to collect 30,000 gold coins within a month. Her Highness Charlene has always praised Your Excellency as a business prodigy. If Your Excellency manages our Star Street Trading Firm, I believe that we can achieve that goal. Seeing Henry's anticipating gaze, Shi Feng only wanted to curse. Just because he managed to earn a few coins, he was suddenly a business prodigy. What kind of sick joke was this? Earning 30,000 gold in a month. Moreover, he didn't actually have 30 days at all. Considering the time when the great demon would appear, Shi Feng would, at most, have 20 days to earn 30,000 gold coins. Even if he currently earned 100 gold or so per day, 10 days would only net him 1,000 gold, while 30 days would only net him at 3,000 gold. That was only one-tenth of the required amount. Players were still stuck in the initial stages of God's domain right now, so it was impossible for anyone to make that much money. If one added a week's earnings of every player in the White River City region together, it might equal 30,000 gold. How was he supposed to earn that sort of money? He might as well become a bandit and snatch the money from someone else. No, that's not right. Even if he tried to steal it, there was no way he could get that much money. Before Shi Feng could reject the quest, a system notification popped up before him. System, Epic Quest Phase 2, Gospel Project, Accepted. Quest Content, you have become the manager of Star Street Trading Firm. Earn 30,000 gold coins within a month and resolve Star Street Trading Firm's predicament. Rewards Unknown.